Okay. Okay, we are live. We are on. How are we doing, gentlemen? Good. Right. So, we're doing great. <laughs> Good All to right. see everybody. Awesome. Welcome, welcome back to the Forestry and Sawmill Roundtable. Tonight's subject is I want to buy a sawmill. Where do I start? We have a special guest with us tonight, Mike from Mike, general manager from Hudson. He's here to answer some questions and tell us about uh, Hudson Forest products. And of course, we got the regulars, Eric McVeigh from the old Jarhead, Tim Tim France from Two Brothers Outdoors, Steve Bailey from MSD Making Sawdust, Mike Wilson, Michael Wilson from Wilson Forest Lands, Paul Trevet. I hope I got that right, from Southern Adirac Outdoors, and we have John Davison, or better known as Dang It, from uh, Davison's All Natural Gym. Welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you can join us. So, where do you want to start this, guys? You want to go ahead? And... <laughs> All right. So, we're going to bring on uh, Mike from Hudson Forest Products. He's going to explain to us what Hudson does, what Hudson sells, and then we'll be open for question and answers. The host. <laughs> The host here may ask a few questions first, and then we'll open it up to the floor. So go ahead, Mike. You're up. Yeah. How are we doing, everybody? So I'm Mike Spadaro with uh, Hudson Forest Equipment. Uh, we are located in Barneveld, New York, on uh, the East Coast. Uh, we have multiple dealers throughout the country, uh, United States, Canada, uh, and a few other locations, too, uh, around the world. Um, we are doing our best to be a one-stop shop. So it's more than just the sawmills. I know that's the uh, main topic of tonight's episode is uh, talking about the sawmills and why to get one. Uh, we also do the firewood processors. We do log skidding. Uh, we do uh, a lot of uh, winching accessories, tools, conveyors. Uh, we even have dirt screeners. So there's a whole array of equipment that we manufacture in uh, upstate New York. It's made right here. This is my hometown. Um, this is my family. This is what we do. Uh, you know, we're American men and women doing our best to build a quality product, you know, around the, the forest industry. So there's a Hudson Forest in a, in a nutshell. So the mills are actually built in Barn, Barneveld, New York. I know for fact because we've been to the factory. Yep, that was a good time. And watched it. I So tonight's subject being I want to buy a sawmill. Where do I start? What, can, what questions should somebody ask themselves before they start and actually start looking into buying a sawmill? You know, a lot of people, when I first talk to them or they come in here, uh, everybody likes to go big, um, which is great if that's what you want to do. But I think a good starting place is what are your plans for the mill? What are you building for the mill? You know, is this a business that you're starting? Is this just because you're needed on the farm? Are you a homeowner? Um, you know, what's your, what's your plans for the mill? And then the next thing you got to do is just take a step back and look at your trees. Um, you need to know what size trees you can handle. It might not have to do with your sawmill. It might have to do with your tractor or your ATV or however you're going to move the logs. Cause let's face it, sawing the log is not the hard part. It's moving the logs. It's moving the lumber. Those things is what you need to have to in consideration. So if you have a big 40 foot tree and no means to move it. You don't need a big 40 foot sawmill. Um, most of the people don't realize the size of their trees and they actually overestimate them. Um, but it's important to know your diameter because you need to be able to get a sawmill that will accept the majority of the trees you have. There's other ways if you have larger trees that you can cut them down and then reprocess them through the sawmill. Uh, so that's, I guess that's where I usually start directing people to, uh, ask questions and, and see what their what their goals are now your your big sawmill is the h360 correct uh big in terms of production or big in terms of diameter capacity well, i know i know you have the slabber 52 and i'm talking yep. about if i was to go into business i want a commercial mill to saw as quickly as i can the h360 the is h360 mill. is a 
awesome mill. Um, that is a, a flagship machine uh, that's very popular um, for somebody described as you just did who wants to go into business. They want to be able to travel with it, soft for other people, and take the back wrenching work out of it because that sawmill will load the log, turn the log, you know, flip the log. It's got cant turners, it's got power drive on it. Um, we even have uh, the Hudson Blade set that we come out with. It's a computer operated set works. So you can uh, take a lot of that thinking out um, and have accurate lumber. Now, I think on the H360, if I'm not wrong, looking on your website, is it possible to order without all the bells and whistles and then add yep. the bells and whistles on as I go, as I grow? Yep, you're, you're right, Rick. Um, you can uh, add on to that mill um, or, you know, do it all in one shot. So there's some options that you can, you know, almost build that mill to your liking. So I, I wouldn't like, um, I'm thinking like the log turner and the um, set works and all that stuff. I can order that at a later time and install it myself on the mill as I grow, correct? Uh, nobody actually does that. Um, very, 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 very few people do that. It's, it's a great idea. Uh, but most people, when they get the mill, uh, they're pretty happy with, uh, what, what they, what they got on. I will say the set works. That's usually something that's new. So a lot of the older mills that don't have it, people are, uh, buying that now to retrofit their, their older mill. Okay. So I'm going to ask you another question. I know you guys are a steel dealer. Um, how's the electric stuff coming along? Is it, is it? going good or Electri electrics come a huge a huge way um so yes the electric is more popular than you know we expected it to be um with the with the new batteries and the new technology the uh all the electric steel line has uh, really developed over the years so that's another thing and that's steel uh is local um so for you guys that are here in new york i mean we are the woodcutters headquarters uh we sell a ton of chainsaws. We have a full service. We're an elite steel dealer uh, right here in New York. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Eric over there in Washington, we're, we're not going to be able to help you out um, as a per contract. We're, we're not shipping a steel to Washington State. Well, that's okay. I'm a Husqvarna guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Although I do true. also have an Echo, and in truth, I'll use any good chainsaw. But sure. you do have products that uh, you mentioned um, the uh, firewood processing, and you know I'm getting old and and broken, and uh, I might have to go that route one of these days. <laughs> yeah, um, we're. I, I like to always put it as we're a bunch of do-it-yourselfers that are marketing to do-it-yourselfers. So we try to think of tools. Almost everybody here uses the equipment that we have. So that's that's pretty awesome. It's not a guy on a computer, you know, that's got solid works and has fully figured out how to computer design something. This is a hardworking guy who's taking a piece of equipment, figuring out how to make it better to do the job that it needs to do. There's no trees the same. That's that's True. the problem. True. Um, that. With the firewood processors, we have uh, like a winch style processor that doesn't need any support equipment. So you don't need to have an extra tractor. You can literally take the processor, back it up to your log or pile of logs. There's a winch that comes out, pulls the log up, sends it through, cuts it off, pushes it through a splitter. That's more Watch of a high, high production though. <laughs> yeah. now, now, I, I, I didn't mean to get off topic, but that's all right. Now you also sell, uh, what is it? Uniforce, the, your yep. logging, your logging skid, uh, yeah, these are when these are attachments. To, these are attachments that go on the back of a farm tractor, and you can skid logs with them. Correct. Correct. And yeah. When have, it comes to log handling, Uniforce has done an excellent job. Uh, we're the North American distributor uh, for Uniforce. They are located in Slovenia. Um, that is the uh, native country of Millennia Trump, and they are located in the north. If you got Italy. It borders Italy in the northwest corner. Um, the very hilly region, not hilly, mountainous region. I've seen pictures. It's awesome over there. Uh, but they have a great uh, winch setup where you can pull the log up to your tractor. You can recover logs that you couldn't normally get any other way. Um, they have even a, a wireless control system now where you can go down to the log, hook your chain on, hit the button. Your log's getting up to your tractor. 
so you can grab a hitch and load your truck. They also have a nice product that we developed with them uh, called the Scorpion. It is a three-point hitch attachment and also a skid steer attachment with the universal uh, couplers. That is a boom with a grapple on it, which is a very, very handy tool to have. If you got a grapple with a rotator, you can pick up a law, you can set it on your mill, you can set your log pile up. Um, it, it's, it's a great thing to do. You can use it on the front of a tractor. If you got the universal uh, set up on the front, you can use it on a skid steer. You can also use it on the three-point hitch on the back. Now, the Uniforce has several different sizes for, for the horsepower of your tractor, correct? Uh, when it comes to winches, you want to have a winch that works with your tractor. If you got too big of a winch for too small of a tractor, um, the winch is going to overdo your tractor. You're not going to get full use out of the winch. Vice versa, if you have too big of a tractor for too small of a winch, they need to work together. Um, and it's not... They rate them by horsepower, but it's not the horsepower at the PTO. It's just to get an idea of the weight and size of your tractor. Okay. They, they're not power hogs. A uh, little over idle. You don't even have to spin up the 540. Save the, save the diesel. You'll be good. Now, um, one thing, when we were up there uh, doing the video of your plant, I think, John, and you mentioned to us that you have an electric sawmill. Uh, we do make electric sawmills. Um, our popular motor is a five horse 220, uh, which equivalents to about 10 horse. It's a great uh, homeowner saw. Um, I don't think see, we got a couple of guys that have a nice uh, barn set up. They got the uh, it's our, our 28 inch Oscar. It's an extremely popular mill. Um, you can get the electric on that too. And then of course, the larger saws, you can also do electric. Right, but if I want, if I had a small shop and I wanted to saw my own logs because I I do woodworking, yep. the electric one, I I think John actually told me he had one set up in his wood shop. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's so the, a very very um nice setup is having an electric mill. Uh, <laughs> no noise from the engine. You can hear the blade speed, uh, especially if you're a, a woodworker, woodcutter. You know, has something right there that can cut a wide board for you. It's a great tool to have in the shop. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike um, Eric's got a question for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if you'd be willing to share with us approximately how many mills you sell in a year. Um, we're in the thousands. Really? Yep. Wow, that's awesome. I had I don't know how many any of the 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 uh, producers or manufacturers sell and i've always wanted to ask that question so that's sure. awesome both yep. impressive um but uh that's for us that's fantastic thank you okay so what i'm gonna do right now what i'm gonna oh, do right mike, now is hang on uh mike michael has a question well i was just gonna open the floor to the to the rest of our hosts here to ask questions okay michael yeah do you ship all your mills from they're in New York, or do you have distributors? Well, we, we do ship from New York. Uh, we also have a network. Shipping is a killer on a sawmill. Um, Eric, you are not the worst. Um, it's actually, Alaska's very difficult to ship to. Right. Um, so we're looking for you know a good distributor up in the Alaska area. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, please let me know, we'll talk. <laughs> um, but, but shipping is the biggest issue, especially out west. Um, you could ship a sawmill cheaper to Africa than you can ship to Alaska. It's amazing. Um, but we do have, uh, uh, dealers throughout the country, you know, they shipping, you know, truckloads of equipment to the dealership. Uh, we also have a very large warehouse and distributor out of, uh, Colorado. They're in the Woodland park area, just outside of Denver. Um, that's operated by max forestry and they handle all the, uh, um, sales out that end of the country and the service. I mean, that's one thing that's really good about Hudson Forest Equipment, too, is the service after the sale. Um, talking to people, working with people, and a lot of it's just training. Um, you know, they, they haven't sawed before and they got a sawmill. They see the benefit of a sawmill because they know how much money they can save with a sawmill or a wood processor or start their business and make money, but they need to know how to operate it properly. Every piece of equipment's a little bit different than the next one. As we already talked about, every tree is different, so you need to know how to adapt to the different things that you do. 
So with Max Forestry and our, our warehouse out in uh, the Colorado area, we actually rail ship um, our equipment to them. That's the cheapest way to get out there at the current moment. And Any other questions? Quick. Yes, John. Can't hear you, John. Oh, not hearing you, John. You're on mute. There we go. Try that. That's better. Um, Turn it back off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uniforms. Um, what's the lowest horsepower of those winches? You know, um, you can actually tractor. put them on the subcompact tractor. They got a model called the 30M. Uh, it actually, is rated at a 16 to 25 horse tractor, if I remember. 16 or 30. And, and what yeah, can that pull? Uh, it's 6,600 pounds. Okay. Yep, 6,600 pounds. It's got 165 foot of cable in there. Hmm. Nice. Yep. So here's a, here's a, here's the, popular, a, the popular winches, the all pull, like uh, the 35M or the 45 series, they're 8,800 pounds to 9,900 pounds. Um, those winches all have 230 foot of cable in them. They got a trailer hitch on them if you want to hook up to a little, you know, forestry trailer. They got a chainsaw holder to drop your saw in there. A uh, nice protective screen. So if you're skidding something, branches are flicking, it's going to protect the back of your tractor. Uh, they, they make a, a really nice product. Oh, so thank here, you. here's it. Oh, <laughs> we keep oh, trying. Gonna... All right. It's yours, Michael. We're getting a little off subject here, with, but I'm interested in these winches, and you were talking about a grapple. Is that like yeah. a knuckle boom type grapple? Uh, yes. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a grapple. You know, it's a specifically a log grapple, which you can use for grabbing rocks or everything else. Um, they open up to, depending on the size, the smallest one's 42 inches, then we have a 51 inch, then we have a 70 inch. Uh, and they'll close all the way up to about three inches enclosure. I have a, <clears throat> I have a farmy 501 winch. Is your winch mm -hmm. something similar to that? Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with farmy. Uh, we are actually and have been a farmy dealer in the past. Uh, uh, we joined on with Uniforce because we were interested in the wireless radio part of it to have the the radio control. We thought that would be a benefit, uh, and then we realized how great of a product the Uniforce was and the sales went from there. And that's how we got the distributorship. Um, yes, it's similar. Uh, if it's a older farming, they're different. Uniforce uses a brake band system. So think of that as a noose um, or, or a band around a drum. The reason they use a brake band is for safety. So that log, it's locked at all times. So if that drum wants to spin backwards, that means the log wants to roll back out. It cinches itself. Um, and then when you wrench, then when you skid in, it, it releases. The only way to release is to pull a release that takes that band off, and then you can pull the cable back out. Um, the farmy, if it's older, it's a ratchet system, which still works well. Um, Cause farmy, farmy's a great winch. They're made out of Finland. Uh, the older ones run a ratchet system, so you have the two cables you have to run, and it needs to drop into a little uh, groove to lock the log. I like the well, idea of the remote. Yeah, the remotes was they're they're really handy. Paul, there Hudson's service on the uh, which is a great too. I have the thirty five M, and I got the cable all squirreled up in there like a squirrel's nest, and brought it over there. And the next day they had it ready for me, a whole new cable on it. Wasn't cheap, but it was cool. Yeah, no, they don't give that cable away. <laughs> no. that, that is something on the winches. Uh, again, a little bit off subject of the sawmills, but uh, you know, to train your cable when you first get it, and you know, they have a, a little uh, break on there that Paul, I'm sure you know about now, so you don't burden us <laughs> that cable coming out. So you got to have a little bit of drag on there to keep the cable tight. So I've got a, you know, back on back on topic for you. Um, could you give us the what what is the kind of the range pricing wise from the bottom end to the top end of your mills? I mean, the question here really is, you know, where do you, where does somebody right. start? Where, where do you start? Area? So if, if you figure out your budget, figure out your size diameter trees, um, you know, figure out how much production you're looking for. We did our best here to split that up into basically three different groups of sawmills. 
So we have what's called our Freedom Line Sawmill. Um, that is uh, the least expensive sawmill we have. They start at about twenty five hundred dollars, twenty four ninety five, um, okay. and that's a sawmill unassembled in a box. So mm -hmm. we did our best to keep the price down. Um, took our labor out so you guys could put it together. And then you have yourself a sawmill for 2,500 bucks. Right. Okay. Well, how pretty. many horsepower is that one? Uh, that one runs a six and a half horse engine on it. Uh, okay. 21 inch diameter log. And everybody always talks about horsepower. And Eric, I'm, I'm sure you can attest to it. It's not, it's important, but you can still saw. And if you have a proper blade speed and a sharp blade, that's where it is. I started on a seven horsepower LT10. Yep. And you know what? I milled a heck of a lot of lumber on that little that little sawmill. They're great. And and to the question, um, that was one of the things that that I always try to suggest to people is if you're not sure, if you're just starting out and and you don't have the funds, because I couldn't afford the big mill that I have today when I first started out. In fact, I had thirty five hundred dollars in the bank. That was it. No more money at all. And yep. so, you know, if you're looking to buy a sawmill and you've got three thousand dollars in the bank, well, there's your option right there. And the truth is those small sawmills can put out a lot of lumber. Now, I know, Rick and Tim, you have Hudson Mills. What horsepower are you guys running? I started out with the Homesteader HFE 30. It comes with a 14 horsepower engine. I've upgraded that to a 20 horse, 22 horsepower engine, mm -hmm. but it did just fine with the 14 horse. I see Mike smiling over there. Yeah. Um, well, you, you guys have fun and you like modifying, but that's, that's what's <laughs> good about Hudson. It's, it's a simple design um, and you can make it your own. You can build off of it. It's not so complex that you can't, you know, what about Tim's thin reason? Sorry, Rick, you put a 20 horse on it. I think your warranty is probably not going <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have told him, Rick. What about I can, tell you, I can tell you right now, Mike, I've used Hudson Warranty. You guys not only stepped up quickly, but I had my parts very fast and I was able to get back to sawing. And I'm I'm just a hobby sawyer. We don't saw for a living. We just saw to pay for a bad habit, actually. But <laughs> Your guys' warranty has been top notch, and I can say that for for fact. All right, thank you. So, getting back to like the Freedom Line sawmill, uh, Eric, you brought up a great point. You know, you had your first sawmill; you didn't have much money. It was a seven horse. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I tell people, you know, if you're looking to get into it, that Freedom's not so bad because you can get started there, and if you are mechanical enough that you can assemble your mill, you're already ahead of the game. So you get the mill, you get some money back with it. You realize how much you can save with it or make with it. Uh, you can turn around and sell it. And now you have an assembled sawmill, not an unassembled sawmill. Um, so that's the freedom line. Uh, I'm pointing here because they're all in our showroom here. And it's just you forgot to... about the Patriot, Mike. <laughs> yep. yep, you got the Patriot. So you got the Hunter Sawyer. That's Those are the 21-inch saws. Then you got the Patriot, um, which, Tim, you got the Patriot. I do. Uh, and then you got the Warrior. That's a 36-inch. And those, those mills are the freedom lines uh, that come in a box and you can assemble yourself. If you want one factory assembled, uh, you can order it that way too. Next up is the Homesteader line. You know, it's great for your homeowner, farmers. It's like the mid-range saws. Uh, again, it comes in a 21 inch, a 30 inch like Rick has, and then a 36 inch um, saw. And then we have our Oscar line, which is behind me. That is the uh, original uh, mill that we came up. We started making mills in the mid '90s. Um, that is the uh, uh, original design that we basically had. We worked off of it. They're going to have some more bells and whistles on them. They're all going to have electric start. Uh, you can put power feeds on them. They can be put up on trailers. There's some options you can start building there. And then we get into our commercial and wide slabbing mills. Uh, Mike, um, Paul had a comment. Also, you wanted to say something I always consider with. Uh... When I look at a mill, is the you know if you have nice straight trees like Mike Wilson out there, versus our curvy trees. You know, yeah. So a saw that'll do a thirty inch diameter straight tree won't necessarily do a thirty inch diameter curvy one. So you got to consider your trees, uh, you know, their shape as well as their size. Yep, that's true. Yeah, you don't want to have a mill right brought to its max diameter because it's it's not going to work. You're not going to get. Like if you're doing the 21 inch, it's it's that's it. It's 21 that's inches. It. That's all you're getting. 
No matter how hard you push. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's, that is a, a big difference between those twin rails and the cantilevers, but there are not that many cantilever mills, right? So, but that is, when I had my LT10, that was always a consideration, right? I had my max cut. I don't remember what it was, but there was no going over that. <clears throat> yes, Rick. All right, I got just one more question for Mike. Um, I'm a farmer. I beat the hell out of my equipment. I expect a lot out of every piece of equipment I got. Do you have a mill for me? Um, if you are running hard, that Oscar mill is great. We also have a mill called a farm boss that is, uh, lack of better words, that mill is built like a tank. Uh, it's overkill built. Uh, it's a three by six box beam frame that's running a two by two box beam head. Uh, you got stainless steel lift tubes. It's it's a tank. Um, a little story on that. Years back, uh, we had a uh, operator running one of them grapple log loaders and accidentally hit the wrong lever. The log came loose. It was probably three or four foot above the mill and it went down. Bang. And you're talking a 30 inch tree. That mill took it. Not saying to do that with anything. You got to be properly blocked on that. But that mill is is built like a tank. Yeah, I, I looked at that mill well, with Steve John. Is at H three sixty two? Yeah. Now I think Steve had a question. Did, Steve, did you have a question? No. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Okay, I see the audience is biting at the bit, Tim. If everybody else, if there's any other questions, raise your hand. If not, we'll turn it over to the audience. Scratching your back don't count, John. Well, it, that counts as a question. <laughs> so you guys went you guys went from like um I don't know, like the getting the logs from the forest to the sawmill. Did you go beyond that? Did you like like Woodmiser went from the sawmill to the building of the furniture? Did you guys do the planers and the yep, edges? I understand and, what you're saying. Yeah. Um and we this company here has been here since uh, 1960. No, it's been in Barnville since 1966. Uh, the Houdin family opened up their company back in 45 or 46. So we've been around for a while um, in Barnville since 1966. Uh, we were selling the Ross band mill, which uh, I wish I could angle my camera because we actually have one here in the showroom. Uh, Warren Ross out of New Hampshire uh, made one of the first portable bandsaw mills, um, which is uh, really uh, pretty cool. Um, and we were selling that mill, and that's when we saw the, the need for mills. Then we started selling another mill out of Canada called the Boardmaster. Uh, they had some financial issues and said, like, hey, you know what? I think we could build these here. And uh, that's, that's where it started. So answering back to that question, um we are starting to take it beyond cutting boards uh we have a nice edger that we're working on that's a hydraulic drive edger so you can start using it to edge your boards down um and we're looking into some other future things but right now we're getting it to the rough cut and then you take it from there we don't have any planers yet or surfacers i i saw the uh video on uh the the guy doing the stakes yep we got steak you know so I just didn't know if you went any further than that or yeah, not. Yeah, we got a lot of different. Yes, it's it's more. I know we're we're well known for our sawmills, but uh, a lot of the other equipment, you know, that we've developed, again, all around uh, trees and wood, are, are right here at Hudson Forest too. All right. So the stake pointers are pretty neat. The new design's pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, you can do a few hundred stakes an hour with them machines. It's they're pretty cool. Okay, so guys, if uh, yeah, go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. Uh, what I want to know is uh, like your warranty, and you build as you go. And I know of a company that you build as you go didn't mean as build as you go. You built as they told you to build. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I, as you go. I, I, I had you know you can add, you can add to yours as you go. Build up. Add more up to it as oh you yeah um and, and getting back to that we, we 
yes, you can, but it's it really nobody does it. Yeah, they get their sawmill or they just trade it up. I mean, half the time that's yeah. usually well, the way I bought, I bought a saw, I bought my first sawmill and it was supposed to be as you graduate, you could add more stuff to it, mm -hmm. uh, electronic motors, hydraulics, right. all that, but they limited you on it. Um, if you wanted to add to the hot, uh, add a, um, I wanted to add a uh, log turner and they wouldn't let me because I had to buy their trailer package first in order for the log turner to fit. Right. There are some manufacturing limitations uh, to adding stuff. We are happy to sell component parts to anybody and you can do it yourself. Um, but when it comes to adding hydraulics to the mill, it's usually not that simple that you can just put a hydraulic power plant on there and be able to run. Uh, yeah. Have we sold plenty of like the log turner kits to people? Yes. Um, it, could we take somebody's mill in here and refurbish it? Yes. But for me to send uh, a hydraulic turner to Eric over in Washington, the logistics of it and the technical of not having a tech in Washington is probably not going to fly too easily. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, was, um, oh, sorry. Go, I, I go think, ahead. My I first mill there. was a uh, floor model mill, stationary mill. And like I wanted to add hydraulics, but I had to add the uh, trailer package first, which yeah. I'm a fat metal fabricator. So I already built my own trailer, axle wheels, leaf springs underneath of it. And after I did that, they still wouldn't sell the hydraulics to me until I bought, took that all back off and bought their trailer package. Then they would sell the hydraulics to me. Yeah, no, we, we do sell our components, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, but, I think, but when you're doing that, you need to be like you guys. You're all, you know, understand mechanics. You can build stuff. You know, yeah. we try to make sure someone's able to do that because it, it's it's hard not being there to know what you're working on to describe how it is. Yes, we give you some help and instruction. Um, but the, you should, there's, they still shouldn't tell people you can build this as you grow. And then you have to do it their way or only way. Yeah, I don't think we advertise that or do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want a hydraulic mill, you're going to have to start with an H360. Um, you can get a stripped down unit H360, but you're not going to be able to take an Oscar ground unit 336 and turn it into hydraulics with the package that we have. Not at this time. Unless you're two brothers outdoors. Unless you're two brothers outdoors. <laughs> but that's what uh, they did. You know, Mike, they, they did it themselves, you know, which is fine. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the one thing that, that I have seen over the years, and I've been very, very active on the world's top forum for Sawyers, let's put it that way, but it is that sawmills have such an awesome resale that there you really don't have to do that because the, typically what happens is the same thing that I did. Now I did some fab work like a lot of you guys. Um, I started with a, with a twin rail on the ground and I put it on a trailer. But the truth is, when it was time to do more with it, I sold it for exactly what I had into it. And I'd already made money with it and milled thousands of board feet of lumber. So I think if, if I were a manufacturer, that's what I would tell guys. Because honestly, it's I, I know I've talked to Woodmiser about this a lot too. For example, it'd be great to put the command station on my mill. But the truth is, I could sell my mill today for more than I paid for it. <laughs> and then upgrade to whatever I wanted right. to. Yeah, a lot of and, times and, it, is, it is definitely easier. That's what you just try to, you know, talk yeah. to people about, you know, either trade it in or, um, or sell it outright, you know, yep. and then just, just move on to the next. Go ahead, Rick. I just wanted to ask you, Mike, um, bearings and shafts, what is the warranty on those? Uh, we have, that's our little every every company's got their niche you know this is what one of our niches we run an h frame design with bearings on either side of the band wheel uh so they're inch and a half pillow blocks and they got an inch and a half shafts uh, we do a six-year residential warranty on those i just wanted to bring that out because i know you guys covered mine when i broke the shaft on it sure. All right. Is there any other questions? We'll open up to the audience. Tim, this is where you're going to have to pay attention because I see a All lot right, of questions. Well, well, here's what I was thinking, Rick. What if I just read down there and then whoever wants to answer can answer it? If I go down um, that, well, I think the questions are for Mike right now for Hudson. 
Well, Remember, I'm I've on the got, East Coast here. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I've got one on here that says, I've been looking at some of these more affordable woodland mills. How are they? Does anybody know or want to answer that question? I can I can mention on that. Um, woodland is a, a company out of Canada that imports uh, their mill or from overseas and resells them here. Um, one of the main differences that you're going to have with, uh, an American built product, um, or even some of the Canadian companies that build, uh, you're going to have structural steel. Um, you're going to have solid welds. You're not going to have, uh, I like to call it a punched out frame. If you look at all those Chinese mills, it's all the same mill painted different colors. Uh, and they're not consistent with their parts. So that's my only concern to people. Yes, there's people that have great mills out there. Woodland's got the, you know, their stuff that they're doing. I'm not stepping on anybody's toes here. It's a fair equal playing field. Um, but just check on the parts, check on uh, the longevity of the mill, check on the resale value of the mill um, while you're making your decisions. All right. Steve K asks, can you adopt the power feed and such to other brands? Yes, our power feed is adaptable um, to other brands as long as you are able to do some fabrication on your own. Uh, I'm sure uh, two brothers here would have no problem of putting our power feed on, I don't know, but use it as a garage door opener. <laughs> uh, is there a mill that will fit in a two-car garage? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, that's where the electric mills come in great. Uh, you yep. can get a little HFE 21 electric, be able to put a 21 inch diameter log right in your garage and zip it away. You know, length is unlimited. Those mills would fit in a short bed pickup truck. All right. Uh, another question. Do you just ship to the uh, New England? No, no. We're worldwide. Okay. Uh, my HM 126 has been great so far. Only sold about 10,000 board feet. Okay. Nice. Uh, I believe a major mill just announced they are closing. Are there <clears throat> are there mills feeling the pain? Are there any tips from Hudson to help make it through? Uh, make it I'm through. Let me read what that's saying. Pro probably mm -hmm. through COVID. I'm thinking, Mike. I, oh, I think. Um, yeah, was uh, COVID was. Uh, it was. It. it, it Changed the world. Everybody knows that. I mean, we, we can't say it didn't. Uh, a lot of people moved out of cities. A lot of people started, uh, couldn't get stuff. So they're finding other ways. I mean, the portable sawmill was a freedom of that. Um, uh, if you have a sawmill, I mean, that that's a freedom that you have. If you have property, you have access to trees. You can build anything you want with a sawmill. Absolutely. Well, I think, I think in lieu of this question, if you don't mind me helping here, I think he's talking about a major mill just announced they are closing. If you have a uh, band mill, one of these portable mills like we all run, you can, I think, find a niche and make a living because you don't have a very large overhead. Is that correct? Uh, yes, you, you can make a living with a portable sawmill. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's plenty of people that do it. Uh, you know, you make a nice little log deck so you can roll your logs uh, onto your mill and, and just start cutting. You're making boards, sticker them up, you're selling lumber. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, comment on the mills closing. I don't know what the questioner was asking, but there are mills that have closed in Oregon recently that have been in the news. Part of the problem is low lumber prices, high log prices. There are also some regulations that happen in Oregon that are making it harder to get logs, but there's a difference between getting logs and what the mill can get for the lumber. And it's just making it really tough for a lot of the commercial mills out here. Yeah, Michael, I can, I can feel you out there just from when I, you know, have traveled there. It, it's your lumber industry is, or logging industry is just, it's, it's huge. I mean, you got mountainsides that are, are, are cropped. And if you have a low uh, lumber price, that's affecting the mills right on. And it's all regulated. So that's, that's a tough one. 
uh, from the wind farm. He says, I know my business has picked up since they <clears throat> closed seven mills in my area. I guess he lives in West Virginia. Um, <laughs> no more stuff right in the moment, guys. <laughs> Steve Somsty. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw a question just a few minutes ago on um, do you offer a trailer package for all of your mills? Um, all almost all of our mills, twenty eight inch and up, can be put on a trailer. That said, the Freedom and the Homesteaders are not designed to be on a trailer. They will fit the trailer package, but the sight gauges, your hand cranks, uh, they're they're not adjustable. So if you put them up two foot, now your sight gauge is up here. You'd have to put something to uh, either stand on or get a different sort of a gauge on there to see what you're doing on those mills. Uh, the so, Oscar mills, they're, they're adjustable, so you can put them on a trailer and you can put that gauge where you want it um, to do it. So, or you'd have to put a platform on the trailer. Right. So, so you can stand on it. Right. And that's another thing that's really nice about our mills. Um, a lot of people like the idea of a trailer. Um, if you're buying through a dealer, that makes a lot of sense to get a trailer because you can buy and load. Um, if you're in an area that we have to ship a trailer to, trailers are extremely expensive to ship because they take up so much space. Um, with our track set up, it's a simple track. Uh, it's an angle iron system, and you can take that, put it on a different frame. You can put a, you know, your own box deal underneath it. Uh, you can make it onto a trailer. I've seen a, a lot of our customers have, have made their own trailer, and that's largely due to the cost of shipping a trailer. But you do offer a trailer. That's what I was asking. Oh, yes. We got trailers. Well, the question was, are there any portable mill offers as in highway rated trailer mounted mills? That was the question. Yes. Yeah. All like, of our all of our mill trailers are, are roadworthy trailers. They have torsion axles and, uh, and high speed hubs. Thank you, Eric. I, did, I missed that one. Okay. Uh -oh. The farm Eric. boss and H360 are even uh, pre-wired. Um, they got lights, and the H360's got brakes on it. Uh, when I when I was on mute, I was saying that mill behind me, I've towed down the highway at 75 on the interstate. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, we've uh, I've I've pulled one myself to California. And okay, I, so I won't see the mileage for uh, the, the speed that I want. It gets pretty flat out there, especially when you're in that uh, salt flats of uh, Utah. Okay, we got a question, Tim. Does the Hudson have any adjustable legs for homesteaders? Adjustable legs. Probably means outriggers. Um, your trailer package. From the, all the, from the wind farm, you can you specify what you're talking about? Yeah, the trailer package do have adjustable legs. I think he's asking, I think the wind farm, I think his uh, mill sits on concrete. I put adjustable pads on my mill, my homesteader, so that I could adjust it on the, um, I got mine on pillars mm -hmm. and it made it easier to adjust. I think that's what he's asking. Is there, is there okay. adjustable legs available? Like an adjustment screw so you can level your track? On yes. our wider, heavier mills, um, we, you can get the box beam track systems that have levelers with them. Uh, the the smaller, you know, twenty one inch mills and stuff like that, we, we keep it pretty simple. Very good. Right. Um, yeah, we're not on it. We we don't have ours on a trailer wind farm, but if you want to contact me, I can show you how to put leveling legs on it. I've done it. Yep, they're easy to put on. They're easy to do. Any other questions, guys? Is there any questions back there we missed by any chance, Tim? Let me go back in here. My, Michael's got the, something for you. Go ahead, Michael. The, the levelers, my LT15 has what they call feet. You can <laughs> screw them in and out to make them up or down. So you can level the mill on, say, a concrete pad or something like that. I wondered if that's what they was asking or if you have anything like that. 
on, on the larger uh, box beam track systems, we have the uh, feet, if you want to call them feet, to level the, the track up. On the, the small, uh, like 21 inch saws, they do not have feet on them. Uh, Mike, it looks like the wind farm is saying, what's the most commonly sold mill you have? Uh, I'll go through the, the lines. Um, the Freedom, by far, is the Hunter and Sawyer. That's the, the one that, um, you know, it's got the, the, the best price on it, put together yourself. Uh, the Homesteader, Rick, you got it. The HFE 30, that's the most popular in that line. And then the Oscar, probably the largest one, the 336. That's uh, been a very popular mill, uh, followed by the 28-inch uh, the Oscar too. Awesome. Uh, Wilson, you – oh, Rick, go ahead. Sorry. I'd just like to uh, put out there, Mike, that when I was researching mills, decided to get back into sawmilling, my son had bought a countertop, a live-edge countertop for his house. And one of the reasons I was drawn to not only the Hudson Mills, but the Homesteader was because I can actually cut between the guides 33 inches. I've done it. Yeah, I can uh, I can cut yep. a thirty three inch wide cant or slab. Yep. on my mill. This is true, and that's why I picked the mill that I did. Of course, cost was involved too, but because this was only supposed to be a part time hobby, not one hundred fifty thousand board feet later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question is: Is it really worth to resharp blades on smaller mills? I'll answer that. Yes, it is. I, I'll answer that too. Yes, go, it is. Go ahead. Yep. Mike? 100%. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Michael? Yes, it was when, no, yeah. when ReSharp was out, but I still haven't right. started sharpening my blades. Paul? Yep, send them all to Steve. John? <laughs> yeah, I don't need them. <laughs> I don't know. What does John? Steve have? Like 400 of them laying around ready, ready to be sharpened? Or right now, John. What do you say? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, wake, I was wake, just saying. Wake up over there, will you? No. Nah. <laughs> Everybody calls me Dang, so I didn't know if you were talking to me or not. All right, Dang it! Will you answer it? <laughs> dang it. Yeah. I was just um, rusted old iron was pointing out. Your mills have to be level instead of just on the same plane. You know what I mean? Or right. can they be the, flat the or do they have to be level? Your your track can be on an incline. It can be on a slant. What you need to pay attention to is you don't want any twists or bows on your track. If that track can bounce anywhere on the mill, you need to put a shim or something underneath supporting it. And and your jacks, are they a fine adjustment jack? Or are they a, a, put it in the hole? You know, and you got so far to go, like wood miser. Um, it depends on the trailer package that you're getting on the tracks. Um, if it's the box beam tracks on the wide, you know, slab mills, uh, they got screw style feet levelers on them. Uh, on the 30, 36, 28 mills with the, the smaller trailers, those have uh, legs that come down and then. Uh, you can put the locks on them, and then there's a bottle jack for, like, the hitch that actually goes in the center, takes up where the torsion axle is to take that weight off the torsion axle. Uh, and then the big mills, like the Farm Boss H360, they have jacks uh, on every corner. That's a, a, a screw-style jack. Rick, did you put that comment up there from uh, from the wind farm? I did. Um, I can't find it. Can you take Mike? I just want Mike. I just wanted to ask you a question. Do you guys still have the resharp program? We we still sharpen locally. Uh, we do not do mail order sharpenings. So they have to bring the blades to you. Yeah, the blades would have to come to this location. That's not okay. speaking for our other dealers and locations. It's up to them if they're doing their own resharp service. All right, Thunderous Knight had a question. Resharp equipment. 
What was that, Michael? Do you sell resharpening equipment? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, we have a band blade. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool piece. It's a chainsaw, chain sharpener, and a bling, uh, band blade sharpener. And you also do chainsaws as well, right, Mike? Uh, yes, here locally. Yes. Now, Mike, um, let me ask you this, too. You guys sold a uh, quite the unique band blade sharpener a few years ago. Do you still offer those, or did they go out of business? Um, that was the veal sharpener. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened on there. Uh, I don't think there, we didn't, we didn't manufacture that ourselves. Uh, and I do not believe that they are selling through resellers anymore. Um, we are also lurking with Dinosaw, uh, for another sharpener. And we have a couple other things that we've been looking into now that their sharpening of band blades has, uh, changed up a little bit all right thunder snipe says what other bands that you don't carry would you recommend brands price comparison brands so, other I brands said you said bands <laughs> oh for christ's sakes open all your right, ears right? <laughs> that's what you get when you have two brothers on <laughs> um let's see <clears throat> Mike, it says, can you possibly show, pan the camera, what you mean by box beam track as compared to angle iron? Um, I can't pan the camera. There's no track inside the showroom. Gotcha. Um, but I can yes. describe it. Uh, I mean, you have a, a box beam steel, and then our track is on top of it. Now the track is is angle iron, correct? Yes. Okay, and that's on a box beam. You can get it off a box beam or on a box beam. Okay. On the larger I, metals, we don't do it on the smaller ones. I'm kind of curious what Thunderous Knight was asking when he said, "What other brands that you don't carry would you recommend?" Um, I'm wondering if he's wondering about sawmill brands or something else like i it's a, a bit there's a lot of good companies out there i'm not sure how to really answer that question um well that's, and i'm not sure what he's asking though mike so that's what i was kind of getting to like yeah. well, what i mean there's brands of chainsaws that's the best part oh, about them i mean we're we're friends with a lot of the other companies too so it's uh pretty neat so yeah. brands yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I want to add to what Mike was just saying, um, you know, really, if you look at who's sitting here right now, we, we have we have some Woodmiser owners here. But honestly, my experience with sawmill companies and, and I've talked to lots of different guys, um, I was even involved in a little uh, well, put it this way, a manufacturer's rep called me about some stuff. And uh, honestly, it does seem to be like a big family. And I think you see that in kind of like Rick and Tim and, and us here, we, we, you know, we all have different models of mills. Well, most of us, I think there's at least three or four different models, but it almost doesn't really matter. And, and I've talked to lots of guys that there's, especially when you're talking American made mills, it's a big family. Even yeah, honestly, true. even the swing blade guys. Yes, that, very, very true. Nicely put Eric. They all, they all have their one little thing they do different or a few things they do different. And it's, it's whatever the customer prefers at the end of the day. Yep. You know, if you got a good company you can work with, you got a service department, you know, that, that, that's good. I think customer service is probably one of the most important things anybody can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just saw the latest question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, customer service is the most important thing. <laughs> I'm back there, put, that question, drag out or the... <laughs> put that question up there, Tim. Right. <laughs> AJP Sawmill owns a Oscar 428, Mike. He's local. He'd like to ask you a question. Can you see the question on the screen? Is it the highlighted one? <laughs> yes. yes. Howdy, guys. Oh, welcome. 
no, no, not to get off topic. How many yeah. deer can I drag out with the? Oh yeah, 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 with my thirty-five M. Well, it depends <laughs> on how heavy the deer is, because uh, you know if you got a decent deer, she's you know one hundred and fifty pounder. Uh, do quick math on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. maybe if it was elk, you know, you might bog it yeah, down. There you go. Yeah, eighty-eight hundred pounds. You can pull plenty of them out. We got people that actually use those winches. Uh, they're scrappers. You know, when the steel goes high, we were selling skidding winches to the guys that were pulling cars back up, you know, ones that they just pushed over. They were pulling vehicles back up out of uh, ravines and places like that and scrapping them. <laughs> Think about that. You get a car frame up here, you're getting paid $300 a frame, you know, $300 a pull. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I, think better than audience, uh, I, I think this is Michael's <laughs> audience right now because this is uh, Michael's sense of humor. <laughs> I have a comment on dragging things with a mill. Some people have seen my videos where I'm snowboarding off of my sawdust pile next to my mill down the hill below it. Somebody told me I should rig my sawmill up, the band on it, to where there's a rope toe on it so I can pull myself <laughs> back up the hill with my sawmill. There's oh, an idea a, for you. Yeah. I'm gonna say that. I like that. Now, I, now, I, I think we're going to have to get you a skidding one so you can just you know, hit the wireless remote control and get down the bottom and pull yourself back up. That's right. why I'm thinking about this idea you were mentioning with the remote control. But yeah. do you have an option where the winch will throw the cable down to me when I'm at the bottom <laughs> of the hill? If you yeah, can come we'll, up we'll with that, on the back of you In the free spool so you can go down and you pull back with you. <laughs> we'll make you a custom harness. I might be sold on this idea. <laughs> Mike, so you're you saying I can butcher a deer with the Hudson? <laughs> the Adirondack people are coming well, out. Well, if right? you look at anybody's sawmill, they do look like uh, some oversized meat slicers. Yes. <laughs> you know uh, that video uh, I had. I had a short that went viral, and it was it was just a, a silly bandsaw coiling video the reason it went viral wasn't sawmill guys it was butchers i figured it out finally what it was that? it was butchers because they all do it so the butchers are coming out right now the adirondack oh. butchers yeah <laughs> oh. i see it can you use deer blood as a lubricant in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> If one of us does a video about butchering a deer with our mill, that is a viral video, I guarantee you. <laughs> Are you throwing a challenge out there, Mike? Yes. You better freeze it first. <laughs> or at oh, least at least kill oh. it first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be well, nasty. Well, Mike, well, this, I, we appreciate this you. dream took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Mike, we appreciate you joining us tonight. I don't know uh, what your time constraints are, but it looks like the questions have died down a little bit here. <laughs> we've, yep. gotten into, we've gotten into some Adirondack lore now. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Yep, we're all, Either we're that all or we killed it with blood and gore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, at least nobody asked if you could skin a deer with, the, with your winch. Don't give me any ideas, Eric. I can answer that. <laughs> Hold up a minute. I think Pete is at the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here you oh, go. There's a question for Hudson right there. Uh, social media has opened that up um, some. So the, there are forums out there. Uh, we don't super regulate it because it's, uh, you know, it's what everybody wants to say. So, yes, there's support. Um, there's also support here. And then you also have a, uh, you know, our, our dealer network um, is pretty awesome, too. So you have support with them locally in I most cases. Mike, Mike, I think he's probably asking about the Woodmiser Pro Sawyer network. So I'm sure you're probably familiar with that. But if not, um it, it, you know, have you seen Woodmiser's Pro Sawyer network or list? I can't say that I have. Okay, so what Woodmiser's done is anybody that owns a Woodmiser sawmill that runs a business, a sawing business, 
Woodmiser has them on a list on their website. So you can go to their website and look them up. So if you're not doing that, maybe that's a something you yeah, should look that's into. Something to, that's something to consider. Yeah, I get we, a lot from that. I mean, I, I think our, our, our sales guys have like lists of local people, you know, to use for references. Uh, I mean, I know that's what I used to do. Um, but having a, a public list like that's kind of a, a good idea. Yeah. So it helped that Sawyer out and it would help uh, potential customers out too. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael has a question. Go ahead, Michael. I have an idea for a question to oppose, not oppose, to propose to, to all of us. What would each of you recommend for someone who was just starting to buy a sawmill or considering buying a sawmill? Where do you want to start? Well, let's start with Mike at Hudson. Go ahead, Mike. What would you recommend? Buy a Hudson? No. <laughs> well, of course. Well, I, mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, that kind of goes back to how I, you know, tried to start out. You know, the most common things when I talk to people is, you know, what's your plan? You know, are you looking to save money or are you looking to make money with the sawmill? Rick? Um, my criteria was, and like I mentioned earlier, I bought my mill because I could cut an extremely wide cant or slab i can go up to 32 or 33 inches um but i would say the best criteria is to figure out what you're going to do with it are you just cutting boards for yourself you're going to build sheds you're going to build uh, you know just uh, home projects or do you plan on selling lumber because that makes a difference and then what size trees do you plan on cutting because that's a big difference in a lot of mills okay eric I would recommend that you find somebody who has a sawmill today and uh, offer to come off bear for them or work with them on their sawmill a little bit because uh, it'll give you an opportunity to really learn what it's all about and they can also give you some feedback. But I, I think honestly, the number one thing I would, would suggest would be that. <laughs> Steve? You're not looking for free labor, are you, Eric? <laughs> no, actually I'm not, but no, I'll always take it. That's great. That. You know, that is great. You know, come see it, put your hand on it, get a demo, see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Steve? I think it'd be about how much you want to invest. It just ain't buying the mill. You got to think about what you got to buy with the mill or after the mill. Good point. Michael? What Eric said was good. But what I did is I bought the small model, the LT15, because I didn't know how much lumber I wanted to mill. I could have bought a bigger mill. In some ways, I'd like to have a bigger mill, but I don't really want to be that deep into the lumber business. That what I, that's what I learned. I only want to, to mill a small amount of lumber and sell a small amount of lumber. So with that, I would say before you get into the business, buy a small mill unless you've been into the lumber business before to learn what the lumber business is like, learn if you really want to be in the lumber business and how much, then buy a bigger mill. I posted a video about how I was quitting milling. It was a little bit clickbait, but what I meant was I was quitting for the rest of the summer. A lot of people thought I meant I was quitting milling for good. And I had a lot of comments from people saying, I want to buy your mill, sell your bill, mill to me. And I think that goes to what Eric was saying. Mills are very easy to sell. So if you buy a small mill, try it out. You can always sell it. You can always upgrade. Absolutely. Paul? Well, I did. Yeah, I agree with Michael there. Um, I have LT15 as well. And even if you think you're, you're starting just to sell your, or cut your own number for your bullet shot or whatever project you have, word's going to get around that you have a mill and, so, and your neighbors are going to start knocking on your door and pretty soon you're uh, taking orders. Uh, so you might want to start with an LT15 or a small mill or a small Hudson mill or what, whichever brand. Uh, but keep in mind that it may expand in the future. John? I'd probably say that I'm muted. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> <I'd probably laughs> say, are you awake? <laughs> I'd probably say that... Uh, you should definitely spend that, that 14 days at another mill. You know what I mean? Helping them out and doing that cutting of that lumber. Wait, wait. Did you say 14 days? Yeah, I said 14 days. 
two weeks, I'd 14, say 14 days. 14 days. <laughs> I, I'd say 14 days. You find out whether you're in love with the idea of cutting lumber, your own lumber, or if you're in love with cutting lumber. Or you're just trying different... to get free labor. Well, <laughs> it's two different things on, you know, whether you want to, because you got to love it. It's not a get rich quick, you know what I mean, scheme. Well, if I you think... want to. If you want to be a school teacher, you got to love being a school teacher. It's not about, um, you know, the money. But but let's not forget that a lot of people, myself included, and probably some of you, didn't have any intention of getting into business because I didn't. When I bought my first mill, I never imagined I was going to go into business and make lumber for somebody else. I did it strictly for myself. So I, I don't want to you know, those people, and there may be lots in the audience that are just looking at this, like, I want a sawmill. Cause that's what, that was me. I was building a cabin in the woods and I looked at the price of, of interior paneling, you know, knotty pine paneling. And I found out I could buy a sawmill cheaper than buying the paneling. So. Yeah. And then the problem is just like the rest of you and myself, there's something about for some people, there's something about cutting wood. You know, opening up that tree, seeing the grain in it. I mean, it, it's just awesome and undescribable to you have a sawmill. And, and you yep, start well, doing it yourself, and then you just you just keep going. You can't stop. To be honest yep. with you guys, I wasn't even interested in sawing milling whatsoever. Rick went and bought his, his Hudson and uh, dragged me into it. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. It looks like a lot of uh, manual main labor. I don't want to <laughs> mess with it. So, but he said, come on over and saw a little bit. So I did, and I fell in love with it. So that's what drove me to get mine. Well, I was so I willing did. to I was willing to keep you as a tailman. You went and bought a <laughs> mill to get away from me. I did. We, got a, we got a few questions popping up here, Tim. Okay, let's see what we got here. What's well, the uh, time on the new Hudson now. What's what? The new lead. What's the lead time on a new Hudson mill, Mike? Uh, we've caught up on a lot. Um, you know, just the larger units are still running a back order. And that's always been a loaded question um, uh, because we have stock here at the factory. You got stock at different dealers locations, but it depends on what model you're looking for. If, you know, we have it or that dealer has it because uh, it just, just the way our distribution network is. Uh, smaller mills, are pretty much uh, you can you can get your hands on one pretty easy. The bigger hydraulics, those could still take you a little bit of time. All right. Do Leaks you do you sell a product like Woodmiser Simple Set that will set the cut height to a cut and consistent thickness? Yes, that is currently available on the H360, the Oscar 52, the Oscar 336, uh, and you can buy the kit to retrofit a uh, an older Hudson, if well, need be. Actually, Mike, you have the quarter. You have the um, quarter scale on all of your saws, correct? We do. So you can cut pretty accurate lumber using the quarter scale on your on your saws. Yep, this is correct. Um, the quarter scale's got your actual rule, and then it has your most popular uh, quarter scales with the blade kerf already calculated into that. So if you wanted a true one-inch board, you want true two-inch boards, that's what you're getting out of your sawmill. And you have those magnetic, which are wonderful. <laughs> yes, that was a, a great addition. So yes. we can, uh, yeah. Uh, what are some of the attachments Hudson offers for the mills, like track sweeps or anything like that? Yeah, I uh, I can't get over how uh, popular uh, track sweeps are. And uh, actually just talking with uh, – Rick, before we, uh, when he invited me to come on, we were talking about track sweeps, and I, I guess that's something that we need to uh, uh, make more easy for the public to obtain. Well, I'll um, tell you, I got that set from you, and it, it was a godsend. It really is. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't good, know if it's accurate is it can roll down the track. So if you have buildup on your track, you need to have a way to get that off, and the sweep does it for you. Seems like on my mill, opposed to Rick's, mine built up more for some reason. I don't know why on that front wheel, but. Man, it's it's been a world saver. Yeah. Okay. What does the resale value look like after, say, 100 hours use? That's always a loaded question, too. Uh, <laughs> depends on the mill. Depends on the package. Um, the, hard, the only time it's hard to sell a sawmill is when you first get it. 
because you're going to want to get as close as much as you paid for, and that's unlikely. Uh, if uh, your mill cost you five thousand dollars and you ran it for three months, want to get something busy or, or something bigger, you're you're not going to be able to get the five thousand dollars out of it because someone's just going to go buy a new one for the five thousand uh, dollars. If you ran the mill, I'm sure Eric can tell you the same story. You know, you ran the mill for a few years. You made your money back with the sawmill. Um, you know, things have changed. He said he sold his for the same price he paid for it. Yeah, not only that, I sold it for the same price I paid for it and the cost of building a trailer underneath it. it cost me 2500 bucks to put the trailer under it and 3500 bucks for the mill, and I sold it for six grand. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that comes with time. You wouldn't have been able to do that, that three months after buying it. Buying it. Five, five years. Yep, that makes sense. I bought my first one for eight grand and sold it for ten five by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oops. Yeah, I, think we, I think we've all done stuff like that. <laughs> Made it out the woods. Put the, put the throat out there and you know, eh, it won't sell. I'm like, oh shoot, it did. Now I gotta do something. You have a friend that, that sold his mill recently and then unsold it. <laughs> it was like, wait. I don't want it. I mean, he was going to get what he asked for it, too. Uh-oh, we lost Mike. Michael. Uh-oh. From the, from the beating I was ready to get from my wife for selling her mill. Well, <laughs> I that. remember that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Rick, you want to message Mike, see if he knows he's off? I'm sure he knows he's off. There's a new question. I can message Mike. Uh do you as a dealer buy back and sell used mills, Mike? Uh yes, we do. Yep, we do a trade up. Um, but it depends again wherever uh wherever you are, look for your local guy because the shipping's the killer when it comes to um we'll take whatever trades that we can. Um obviously if it's you know good for the owner and us. Uh, we'll we'll do that, but you usually, if you're not in New York State, we're probably not going to be able to do a trade with you because it's going to cost too much to ship the mill back and then gotcha. ship another one to you. Gotcha. But uh, Eric, but we have dealers at... throughout the country, you know, and then you can deal with them uh, on trades too. Gotcha. Uh, Eric, take a look at private chat. Uh, I, I'm seeing that. That's good. But I noticed a question here. Um, did, you, did you see Victor's question? I think that's a good one, um, but I'd like Victor to toss a, something else out. Um, you, you say, my problem is, what am I going to do with it? I'm on the edge for next winter. I'm not sure what you mean by I'm on the edge for next winter. I mean, if you have logs in the yard now, I'd also want to know, are those hardwood or softwood logs? Are you are you on the East Coast? Um, so there, so he's uh, uh, he's up here by us, Eric. He's a uh, does firewood. Oh, okay, okay. So no, no mill though. No. Gotcha. Not, so not on the, yet. Edge, on the yeah, edge yet. For next winter must be the mill. I, I, I'm gonna say I would want to know if that's hardwood um, or not because hardwood, I think you could let that sit a lot longer than softwood. Um, if it was softwood, I'd say get somebody to bring a mill to you and mill those up um, just because you just don't want to leave softwoods down that long, but anchor seal the ends at the very least. But yeah. if it's hardwoods, anchor seal them. And uh, when you get the mill, you might just have a little spalting. What is going on with Michael? <laughs> He's, He's trying. Out. He must be having uh, some technical div difficulties. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> All right. I'm looking to get a trailered version. My son lives in New York. What if we brought the mill to Bardveld in New York? Yeah, that's wonderful and great. Look forward to meeting you. All right. I think he just bought a mill from you guys. Uh, yeah, he Mike. bought an HFE 36, I think. He's in Alabama. Uh, cut two pines today that I'll mill next week or so. Bugs didn't get to them. That's good. Uh, don't they get into the pines quick up here. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't get into them. Yeah, you guys can get uh, borate products out there, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I would do. I would, I'd end seal them and spray them. 
Uh, let's see. So no, Victor West Anthony. Virginia, Rick. Oh, he's in West Virginia? Yeah, and a HFE 36. Yeah, I thought he was in Alabama. Wrong. My bad. Well, a little shorter of a drive. West Virginia, Alabama, same thing. Yep. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we Craig. How are you? West Virginia, too, um, in that uh, northern corner. I know West Virginia is a pretty cool state. Yeah, one side of the state's a lot different than the other, especially if you get a road there. I'm northern corner, too. Yep. Well, that's that's awesome. like New York, Beautiful. isn't it, Mike? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Michael's trying to get back in. Uh, Ravens Ridge, um, Ravens Ridge tossed a question out on Borate. Um, Welcome back, Michael. Know. Am I back? Hey, there yeah, he is, back, buddy. He's back. So I don't. Um, I'm not sure about this Borate question here. Twenty Mule Team Boroxo. I don't know what that is, but if I would look at the ingredients, if Borate's in the ingredients, then it probably would work. I've heard yeah. of using. I've heard right. of using the 20 mule. I've heard of oh, using yes. the Baroxo on uh, logs for bugs. So yes, it seems to be a popular idea that you can use it for on bugs. Perfect, uh, Mike. What would you consider the minimum bed length should be? Uh, you have to allow, um, which is a, a difference from the Canton Lever system that Eric has and the four post head that we have, um, you have to allow for where the mill is positioned on the bed. So if the mill takes up three feet, you have to have three feet more bed length than the log length you're looking to, to saw. All right. And, and if you want a minimum, I started with a 14 foot bed, which allowed me to cut just shy of 12 feet. And I cut a lot of lumber on that. I mean, what I always tell my customers, if you don't need 20 feet, don't cut 20 feet. It's too heavy. Uh, <laughs> this is true. Cut it down. Cut it to what you need. Plus, I always say, if you want eight foot lumber, cut eight foot six. So the minimum bed length, if you ask me, is about 12 feet. Uh, what tools and accessories do you recommend for running the mill as a hobby or a side gig? Obviously, a can hook, anything else you consider essential or worthwhile. Anybody? Two, two cat hooks. <laughs> uh, chainsaw. Chainsaw? Yeah. A tail man. A tail <laughs> woman. Tail young, woman young in one. tights. Come back. <laughs> Somebody else to mill the flitches. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Come on, Mike. Learn to do them like I do, and it won't be a problem. <laughs> a tape uh, measure. Uh, tape measure? Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I'm, trying, I'm thinking. What about you, Mike? What would you recommend with a new mill besides a can hook? Uh, you guys pretty well nailed it with the can hook, the chainsaw. Um, obviously, some extra blades. Um, extra you blades. Do, I mean, you do go through blades, and you got to be able to um, have them on hand when you're sawing, or you'll get frustrated. Rob in the woods says they're strong back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five gallon of transmission fluid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots bark. of lots of ATF. Yeah, and Andy says a bark spud. Yep, a respirator. <laughs> Here we go again. Farming square or framing square. I'm sorry. Framing square. Metal detector. Tractor. Ahead, gloves. 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 Andy yep. said a bark spud. That's similar to what I was going to ask. Do you have a bark solution for your mills? or getting the dirt off, getting the bark off? Uh, we do the chainsaw attachment, the barker. You have a chainsaw style debarker? Uh, yeah, it's a debarker head that goes on the uh, end of a chainsaw. Runs a oh, got three you. and a quarter inch uh, planer blade. Is that the uh, log wizard style? Yep, same thing. So right. no, no debarker on the mill though. No. no. Steve K wants to know, and I think we get this every time, what blade <laughs> lube is everybody using? Rex, Seasonal. here we go, dang. <laughs> Rex, we go. I use I use um Dawn dish soap <laughs> and pine saw with water. 
And in the winter time, I tried it this year. I'm using RV antifreeze. Seemed to work very well. Eric? Summertime, I use water, five gallons of water with about a half to one cup of pine salt and a healthy squirt of Dawn. In the winter, I use windshield washer fluid and Dawn and pine salt. Um, windshield washer fluid won't stain the wood, even though it's blue, and you can get it down to minus 35. I will tell you, I'm using minus 22. My mill got to minus 30 this year, and it did not break the lube on it. I do the same. Michael? Pine salt. Water, water. Dawn dish detergent. I don't use anything for freezing because it just doesn't get that cold here. So just water, Dawn dish detergent. Now, didn't I see a video that you did that you weren't using lube at all at one point? Most of the time, I don't use lube. Okay. With Douglas fir, is, which is mostly what I mill, most of the time, I don't need it. I put a little bit on if I get some buildup on the blade or if I know there's going to be pitch pockets. Otherwise, especially on green wood, I don't use it. Steve? Don, dishwashing liquid and water in the summer. In the wintertime, the same thing. I got an electrical heat tape on my jug. Oh, oh, oh. you are fancy. Huh? Uh, in the wintertime, straight windshield washer fluid, no pine salt or anything. Uh, summertime, water and pine salt. I don't know what the measurement is, but I've a good glug, glug, glug from the bottle. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. That's it. Yep. And John, here we go. Ready? Go Dang ahead. it. Dang it. Wake up, John. <laughs> this this is where they wish. Oh, dang this it. This is where they wish my mic was muted right here so they didn't have to hear, all hear this. Uh, what? If you're, Sorry. Are you if there? You're not running, if you're not running diesel fuel, you're wrong. That's, that's what I got to say. <laughs> if you're not running diesel fuel, you're wrong. Diesel fuel is, um, look up the MSDS sheet for uh, your windshield washer fluid. It's more flammable than diesel fuel, and it's worse for the environment than diesel fuel. Um, if you're not running diesel drip, it's costing you money. It costs you more money to run water than it does to run, run diesel drip. Evidently, diesel's free where you're at because it isn't here. <laughs> uh, how how much time you do you spend this year you want to be filling up your water jar? A long time on the Hudson sawmills. Uh, hey, hey, dang it! All things we use on the wheels, it would uh, it would deteriorate the belting. So, dang it! Let me tell you something. My water's free. <laughs> no, it's not. Mine yeah, is. It. No, I got a not. well. I got a well, no, buddy. Not. It is. Mine is. I got an artesian not, well right down the road. It's, it's, it's not free. Wait a artesian minute. Well is. Footsteps. Yeah. How, See? How, <laughs> how much time does it take you to fill up the five gallon jug? <laughs> how much time does it take you to fill up the five gallon jug? No, as long I as have someone water. else fill it up. The water hose fills my. I mean, I just stick the water hose in and let it fill it up. Right, but you still got to spend 30 seconds getting the water hose, turning the water hose on. No, my, water hose, my, my water hose is right on the corner of my shed. <laughs> I, get Steve's wife, I get Steve's <laughs> wife to fill up my water jug. Dang okay. it! <laughs> so how long does it take that garden hose to get water into your tank? Uh, long enough that I can take a break. I've 30 never seconds met. a day? A minute a day? You know what I mean? A minute a time? There's no arguing that there are advantages to diesel. It, it, there are. I'm not going to disagree That's, with you. But I'm just I'm saying, still running water. You can spend you can spend 40 hours a year filling up your water tank, really, real quick. So who's, does who's your diesel for that? Jump in the tank by itself. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you get that much rain, he uses you know, your diesel. Uh, look. <laughs> Look, look, here's the thing. John is right. He did a great video on this. The truth is you only use like one drip every few seconds. It's such a small amount that I know when when uh, Kevin Bales was here milling for me, I, I never saw him do anything with his lube other than turn it on and off. Like, he, he never, you don't he didn't fill it up for a week. You know, I mean, so I hear what you're saying, John. Totally. I don't disagree with you. I'm just not running it because I won't. But. And then, and then people say it'll it'll do your blades, you know. That's that's or your belts, you know. It'll wear your belts. Your belts are fourteen bucks a piece, you know what I mean? That's twenty eight bucks for a belt. 
um, which you've got to replace that every so often anyway. Might have I never, have might have never worn out before I broke a blade and the blade ripped the belt, ripped the right, belt. Right. You know, never worn out a blade yet or belt yet. Now, hey, there John. was a comment in the questions over there about uh, blades what? after pine. And honestly, I don't have a problem. I mill 90% Ponderosa pine. I don't have a problem with water and Dawn and 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 uh, pine salt. So, John, there's a comment in here that if you yep. run diesel, what do you do with your sawdust? And I'm, I'm um, being serious. Right. So you're running one drip every two seconds. If you can pick up your sawdust and you can smell it and it smells like diesel, you're running it too fast. Um, so you should not even smell the diesel fuel in your sawdust. And then what I do with it is I compost it. And in a year, I put it right on my garden and that diesel is gone. You know, I don't know. I would rather run that diesel fuel and put that sawdust in my compost pile than run windshield washer fluid and trust that sawdust in my compost pile. Um, so there's, there's such a small amount of diesel in there. You really, you spill more diesel, or you spill more gasoline filling up your chainsaw than you put on the ground in a day with uh, milling. You're, you're just, you're putting a cup every eight hours, maybe, you know, maybe. The diesel is probably less than the bar oil we're flinging around off of our chainsaws. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that is true. Absolutely. Yes, there's a good one. Hey, Thunderous Knight's got a good one for you. Put that sucker up there, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoosh. One time. Especially good for 4th of July. Yeah. Look up. Look up the flammability of your diesel fuel and then look up the flammability of your washer fluid, your windshield washer fluid. The windshield washer your fluid is alcohol. Windshield washer fluid will ignite before your diesel fuel will. Oh, yeah, it's, it's sure. alcohol. Yeah, it's alcohol. And you're but running, alcohol evaporates. And, and you're running your, uh, yeah, but you get a few sparks on there and people are like, oh, your diesel will blow up. No, it won't. Your windshield washer fluid will blow up before your diesel will, guaranteed. All right, that's it. Who's going to do that video? I want to see the video of sticking a match to windshield yeah, washer to and a match to diesel over. To <laughs> that's it. When I'm back out at the property, I'll see if I can. I'm going to try to light it. That's it. Here you go. I'm going to throw this oh, out there. I'm be try to light a fire. Him. Hold on. This is for Michael Wilson. I'm going to see if windshield washer fluid burns from the top down or not. Faster than <laughs> <this>. <laughs> oh, good lord! And does heat rise when it comes off of the windshield wiper fluid? Well, no, it's <laughs> that's, down. that's the trick. Oh, any more questions, guys? <laughs> yep, I was going to ask if there's any more because I think I'm going to sign out of here. Well, Michael, we appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, um, yeah, it was it was good. And, um, We'll see if we can, uh, you know, join some other ones in the future here, too. So I appreciate let, it. Appreciate let the invite. Know if you come out on the west side here. We'll meet up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a hold. I got to remember to uh, um, shoot myself a, a message so I can remember to call you before so you can make the seven-hour trip down to Eugene. And if you do that, we'll, we'll see if we can't drag Mike out, the other Mike. You're just I trying to get Mike up to the property. Well, you'd be two hours closer. <laughs> Look, all you got to do is yell snowboard. <laughs> hey, I got some really good hills for snowboarding. Do you have a lift? Yeah. Yeah. It's called a tractor. Tractor winch. winch. You need a skidding winch. I got a Jeep <laughs> winch. We'll just tie a, we'll hook the winch on his belt and he can go down the hill. And hopefully he doesn't go farther than the winch will go. <laughs> hopefully Mike, I don't get the end of the line. <laughs> Mike, we really appreciate you joining us tonight. We, I Absolutely. know, I know you're on your own time, so um, we really appreciate you showing up. And thanks a lot. You've been a, you've been fun having on here. Really yeah, nice to meet you guys. We haven't met That's before. Been fun. 
So before yeah, like, you go, uh, I just saw Nathan Nathan uh, out of the woods sawmill joined us. So everybody say hi to Nathan. Hi Nathan. Hi Nathan. Hey Nathan. Hi Nathan. <laughs> no, that's Chris. <laughs> okay. Yep. Time over. All right, guys. Have a good one. Happy summer. Thank you. Thanks Thanks. A lot. Thank you. And everybody else, we're not done yet, so don't don't run and hide on us. We're, he's just taking <laughs> off. We're going to let the manufacturer go. <laughs> oh, well, now fun. we can all open up. That was fun. It was. Now we can talk yeah. about him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys that are was... horrible. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, he's a good, helpful guy. I've met him many times. <laughs> yeah, and they've, got, they've got places all over the United States, too. Right, you know what I mean. They have, you know, they're they're dealers. everywhere. I'm, yeah, they have dealers in Minnesota and, you know, not Wisconsin and Chicago and mm -hmm. not too far from me. Well, uh, Paul, Paul had a piece of walnut that he couldn't cut. It was too big for his <laughs> wood miser, and uh, Hudson actually brought a mill out to his place and cut it for him. Right. Brand, brand new uh, Oscar Fifty Two, never used. Fifty Two so. slabber, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, I remember seeing that video. Yeah, I guess they've got a warehouse or something in in uh, Colorado. He mentioned, um, but that's still a little bit, a little far from for Michael and I. Yeah, if I can't get Michael out to Northern Washington, he's never going to make it to Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's pretty sad if you can ship a mill to Africa cheaper than you can ship it to Alaska. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is yeah. pretty sad. Really, makes you wonder why that would be. Almost There's makes a, you think, huh? I got a, I got a big F three fifty dually, you know. Just <laughs> I'm a camper. Just send me a big trailer full of mills, and I'll haul it up there for him. I have a twenty foot flatbed that holds a lot of mills. Come on, man, let's go. Let's do <laughs> it. We'll we'll do a convoy. You can sleep in the bed of your pickup. I'm gonna sleep in my camper though. I don't know if Michael, I want to do that in Alaska. The mosquitoes will carry me away. I'm not that big. <laughs> Michael, you need to come out east and show us how to do that Humboldt cut. Oh my God, I can't. You got to learn how to say it before he'll do that. Humboldt. I tried to show you on video. No, no. You know, <laughs> you know. After after you showed us on video, Mike, I actually tried to do it on a very large, um, yellow Thanks bird, Rob. and I failed miserably. I did a lower cut, an upper cut, an upper, upper cut, after cut. I'm like, get the damn bulldozer. Let's push this tree over. <laughs> Maybe I should try doing a traditional one on video, see how that works. Yeah. Hey, I did prove that trees go boom when they fall down in the woods. That's <laughs> yes, true. you and did. I, I wasn't there to hear it, and it still went boom. <laughs> exactly. It even shook the whole screen. <laughs> That was that was just for you, buddy. And I proved that a tree does not fall on video if you forget to turn the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> how many times have you forgot? Do you, do you know how many? No, you know what? The last weekend I was out filming, I've got a juice box for my secondary camera. And what I didn't know is it would only run for like 30 seconds and shut off. So the whole time I'm filmed all day. My secondary camera would go 20, 30 seconds, die. I had no idea until I got home. Uh -huh. Good well, time. Okay, okay gonna... guys, we got a question. Do okay. any of you use an open face notches regularly? An open face what? notch? What the heck do yeah. you mean by that? This kind of notch? Yeah. Never. Never. Is that where both go, both are angled? Yeah. You did that's a video the on face. that, Michael. I did one with the sloped back cut. Yeah. No. The open face with oh, two wait. angles, upper and lower, you use it if you're making a tenon to drop it straight and true. So I, 90, 90 degrees. I don't do it. I only use the Humboldt. Yeah. I, no one ever taught me how to fall a tree. And um, I just watched people do it. And I started teaching myself. I've started trying to learn the Humboldt because. And I can do it on small trees easily, but then I noticed I'm doing it completely wrong. It still works. 
but I'm not cool enough to turn my saw upside down to get the bottom done. So I got to learn that still. All right, Eric, this is for you. Did Eric holler timber or look up the hill? <laughs> no, I said, Tim, get the hell out of here. Didn't you, didn't you hear that? Tim. So obviously I looked up the hill and yelled, but I did not yell timber because I am not a lumberjack. That's right. No lumberjacks. But you could have said Tim Burr, are you cold? There you go. Tim Burr. Mm. I'm in oh, I'm in therapy. Oh, thanks to you, Mike. <laughs> what? I, I had to go to therapy because Mike, I've been called lumberjack my whole life by the all timers. <laughs> I knew there was going to be some collateral damage when I did that. Oh video. my god. And, the and then and then Mike tells me there's there no such thing as a lumberjack. It's been a it's been a charade my whole life. It's been one big lie. <laughs> I've been to somebody therapists. had to break it to you. I've been to two therapists, both of them jumped out the window. <laughs> did they yell timber when they went out the window? <laughs> I think they did. <laughs> well, there's what he's referring to, Eric. Uh, it's about 30 degrees in the bottom 60. No, 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 uh, my, no. Never cut, never cut one like that. Always have a flat edge. When you want it to, don't want it to pop off. Maybe that's a question for Michael Wilson because he's he's a faller. That's. I've never tried that one before, so I don't know. A lot of people don't know about the Humboldt is when it hits, it actually pushes the tree forward and off the stump. A lot of times you don't get the bounce on the stump when that happens. Keeps it from chasing you through the woods. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it keeps from, from going backward towards you. It pushes the forward away from you. Uh, Mike, there's a question here for you. It says, you cut Doug fur. How about Graham fur? If you go a few months back on my channel to this summer, I cut quite a bit of Grand fur. I didn't cut any of it down. It was all wind blow that I cut into firewood. I have a lot of videos about yarding it out with my F-250 pickup and cutting it into firewood. And I keep telling you, I can bring a big mill down there. <laughs> All right. So with cars, we can buy parts and accessories from many different companies, not just the manufacturer. Is there something available for mills? I want to add a debarker for the LT-15. Go ahead, I Paul. I've always looked at the LT35 and the 15. It's having a very similar design head, uh, the, the you know saw head itself. And thinking that a uh, debarker from a 35 might bolt right onto a 15. However, you probably need an alternator from the uh, 35 as well to power it because it's an electric motor, electric, electric saw. <laughs> so it's possible. Let me know if it works. <laughs> yeah. If you sharpen wood miser. If they would, if the debarker could go on the LT15 and they said no, it would have to be custom attached. Now, I did see on a video the other day an LT15 on a trailer that was uh, ran all by itself and everything. Anybody yeah, aware of that? Yeah. So, um, there's a couple here. One I want to answer, but before I do, I will tell you this Wood Miser. Well, when I was building my LT10, which became the SM LT10 for Super Manly LT10, which, by the way, is a little bit play on Manly, but um, they actually sent me the drawing for the LT28 clamp. And so it is possible. I'll, I will bet you that manufacturers like Hudson would probably... Do similar things. So I think, you know, if you wanted to buy a debarker and all the stuff to put it together, you'd have to do your own fab work. But I would be I would be very surprised if they wouldn't sell you that because honestly, I mean, you know, they, they I, I think they're happy with it. Uh all right. Tyler says I'm in Wilbur, Oregon and want to work. Please pay. Teach me. <laughs> okay, I won't pay you, but um, Wilbur is, I've, I used to manage CenturyLink for the Wilbur market, but, um, and I've been there many times. I used to go that way to where my sawmill is today. Um, 
but I probably could arrange for you to be with somebody with a sawmill if you're willing to drive a little bit. So what I would suggest is you could either find me on Facebook, um, just look up the old jarhead uh, or on YouTube, and I'd be happy to try to help you get on a sawmill with somebody. Usually arrangements like this, they don't pay you. They just, if you want to come, unless you're trying to get a job, but there's a difference between I want to learn about sawmilling versus I want a job. So if you just want to learn, you might even be able to, I mean, I know guys all around that have sawmills here in Eastern Washington. So shoot me a line on Facebook. All right. So we're going to go around the table on this one. Anyone know how a 10 degree will last in a hardwood versus a seven degree as far as sharpness? I'll go first. Go um, actually, this Cricket 94 asked and a question earlier and never got answered either. The ask would be a good durable blade. For their mill, they have a 10 horsepower engine. I don't believe a 10 horse will run anything less than a 10 degree blade, if I'm not wrong. But well, we use 10 degree blades exclusively. We've tried other degree, and the 10 works for us. And we cut a lot of hardwood, and we don't have any problems with it. Eric, so I can tell you that Woodmiser didn't used to sell anything but 10 degree blades for the smaller mills. And I know that in the very least, the 739 needed at least a 26 and a half horse mill. So I would say if you're not running a big horsepower mill, stick with the 10 because you, you really need the power to start pushing, you know, four or seven degree bands. Uh, dang it, John. Um, the 10 degree will, in my opinion, 10 degree will stay sharper longer than the seven in hardwoods. But the seven will sell faster than the ten, and gotcha. the the ten will. Um, I mean, you can saw a hedge, which is the hardest, or black locust or something with a ten degree band and be just fine. But you get into a group of white pine knots, and that ten degree, you better have it sharp and you better have it tight because it'll it'll <laughs> dive in white pine in white yep. pine knots. That 10 degree will dive. So I've just taken the happy medium. And with that Woodland Mills uh, sharpener, you can adjust the angle. Yep. And I've gone to about an eight and a half degree angle. So you can get um, the speed versus the sharpening, you know, the how long it lasts out of the blade. Mm -hmm. And Woodweiser will sell you a nine degree blade now, too. So yep. that's all. Yeah, Rick enough. got a couple of those. Are they, uh, Mike are they any good? I didn't notice a difference. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't notice any difference. I can notice when I sharpen them to eight and a half, I can notice that they're faster than the 10. Is that right? So, yeah. Michael? Since I've had a sawmill, I think I've cut a total of three small hardwood logs. I couldn't tell you about hardwood. Most of what I cut is softwood. I mostly use 10 degrees. I've used some seven degrees on my little 14 horse LT10. I really haven't noticed a huge difference in them. There might be a difference, but I haven't used the different blades enough to notice. Wood Miser told me to use a 10 degree on what I cut, and that's mostly just what I use. Yeah, smaller horsepower. Steve? I use mostly 7 degree, 10 degree. I do a lot of hardwood. So the 7 degrees is what I use most of. The 10 degrees seem to wear out faster, and the 7 mm -hmm. 10 degrees mean we're out bad, but the seven degree goes pretty good and it lasts longer. Gotcha. Wow. I'm just oh. the opposite. Yeah. Can't really say. We, we bought one box of 70 degrees and we used one or two of the blades and it's collecting dust now. We prefer it's, the 10 degree, 10 degree and four degrees. We go from one, one extreme to the other between 10 and four. It did How was fours cut? Four is like, we love them to cut nice and flat and true and like clean. a hacksaw. <laughs> <laughs> they do cut flat. Fours are yeah. flat. All right, let's see. You actually think, don't need to sand or plane the wood after. I think it depends on how you push it. If you're uh, I lost my place. All right, so let's see. You black got one locust. on black locust. So that's the next one. Yeah, black locust is very rot resistant and very hard wood. I've never seen how the grain or color looked. 
but I'm sure there are some kind of market for it. Fence posts. Yep. Oh, I've got oh. flooring. I've got lots of black locust. And I'll tell you, number one, best band I've ever used on black locust was uh, Wood Miser 747s. I didn't like the dust in my face, and I lost my voice after a while because that stuff is, I don't know if it's toxic, but it's hard on you. It was dry, so very fine. Um, but I've cut lots of black locust and beautiful grain, absolutely gorgeous grain. Um, hard as a rock, but I mean, I, I had no problem. Now I'm running a, a LT40, so not a big deal, but I love seven degree bands on black locust. We cut, we cut about 8,000 board feet of black locust into four by four posts for fencing. And what they do here is they char the bottom of it where it's going to go into the ground. And uh, they make fence posts and they last forever, but you got to nail the fence up before it turn before it dries. Once it's dry, you can't nail a nail in it. <laughs> as you, far can't as a rock. Put, you can't put a screw in it. All right, That's about so, the only thing they use them around here for is fence posts. So really? Andy, uh, Andy asks, what's the difference between a nine degree and a ten degree blade? One degree. One. One. <laughs> 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 what guys are called the I was waiting for that. <laughs> is he is he laughing, Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, Woodmiser used to sell the nine degree band as a frozen wood band. Yes. Why I don't know, but you know. Uh Kilted Sawyer, I've had very good luck with the Woodmiser double hards 10 degree. Yep. That's what I use. That's what I'm doing. What I use. Mostly. Uh, where can I get mine from at the Kilted Warrior? Oh, where he's, asking, wait, what? he's asking Craig. A, he's asking Craig a question. It looks like teach me to trade, boys. Uh, anybody changes or adjust set? I uh, I'll answer that first. There is a good video out by Cooks Sawmills. And he he talks about the uh, set on a blade when he saws frozen lumber. I think he does a set a little <laughs> little more than what they come from factory. But that's a pretty good video. I watched that in the past. Eric, I no, I just use standard wood miser, and I don't resharpen my own anyway. So, John, um, yeah, you can with that setter, you can try your own custom sets you know what Michael. i mean whatever degree you want like now all my blades come straight from wood miser steve joe me i modify mine paul straight from wood miser as well gotcha what degree blade would you suggest for hickory anybody never milled it seven degree yeah steve you do quite a bit don't you a lot of hickory seven yep Let's see. You can do 10, but 10 is going to slow you down. And if you don't watch it, have your band tight and a good sharp blade, you're going to wave just like knotty yellow pine, Virginia pine. Correct. All but right. it's so, hard. Thunderous Knight has a good question about Canadian. Uh, what, yeah, what eight? Eight? They're up with north. A, with a golf <laughs> club? <laughs> yeah. If a Canadian lumberjack sharpens a golf club, and chop the tree down with it. Do they yell timber or four? <laughs> well, we'll let the expert on lumberjacks answer that. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I think you would yell four, eh? Four, I was going to yell timber, eh? How about four timber? No. So no, how way, many of you? you know? Wait, wait, wait. Who, who all here lived in Canada? Raise your hand. Okay, there you go. Oh, timber, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, Joe Main is the man. I use Joe Main at ICT in Georgia. Free shipping. Uh, let's see. I did Hickory and used the Turbo 7. Uh, boys, I have my ISA cutting insurance and my workman's comp. Oh, that's Tyler trying to get a job. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I just quarter saw a 1500 board foot of hickory. Turbo 7s worked great. Yep. Good. Turbo 7s yeah. a good all round band. No, no doubt band. about it. 
They're Tyler. a good team. Anybody want to hire Tyler? He needs some work. <laughs> Can't afford to pay myself. Right. Me uh, either. Rest, rested old man. Anyone ever use carbide tip blades? No. For a chainsaw. One time. One time. I will tell you this. Carbide has changed. So when, when Woodmiser first came out with carbide, on the Woodmiser side, they did it for resaw only, and they did not recommend them for milling logs that you just pulled out of the forest. But I do know that Craig, the Kilted Sawyer, uses them and really likes them, and apparently now you can resharpen them. My okay. view is they're considerably more expensive than double hards, and so I'm I'm I I just use double hards. I I, I see no reason to go to to uh, carbide myself. All right. So Rob's Woods wants to know opinion about best blade maker. Pretty much oh, everybody. I, pretty much everybody buys them from Woodmiser, even Hudson. Well, ICT does make their own, though they also sell Woodmiser bands. So Woodmiser, yeah, ICT and. They make a really, really nice band, but I do think that most people just use wood miser bands. All right, Tyler, that's that's enough of that. We don't need any of that. You can either quit or get. So somebody's got to say that Rob's Woods, you know, in custom sawmilling, just bought you guys a gallon of diesel fuel so you can, you know, say that. try that out. I, know, I, I, I've told you before. It, I've actually often thought about doing the um, the old squirt can diesel for when I am because I ran into I had a dead dead dug fur that had root rot and I've never seen band build up like I did on that one and I normally don't with dug fur like Mike was saying but I did on that one and I was like okay I might need to squirt some diesel on here when well, I'm, I'm cutting saying, dead Douglas, Douglas fur I'm more likely to need lube. Yeah. I get more build up with dead Douglas fir or ponderosa pine than I do with green. Yep, I agreed. All right, so <clears throat> whose link is Tyler Mung on? Anybody know him? Nope. No. I, well, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Tyler right now. Most of us sitting here, we just saw for ourselves. I mean, we sell lumber and stuff. But our operations are not big enough to hire anybody to come work for us. And if you want to work on a sawmill, you're going to have to look for a local mill. I'm sure they'll hire you. They're always looking for people that are willing to work. And you'll have to start at the bottom and work your way up. But you'll have to find a local mill to you. Yeah, I don't think there. you're going to find that every one of us here tonight, we mill... Even when I was milling uh, full time as a business, you know, well, not technically not full time, full time. In other words, I wasn't running my mill for myself. The, the my customers provided my labor. I, I couldn't afford to hire anybody. If I had to hire people, that would take all the fun out of milling. <laughs> right. I just got out of a business where I had to deal with laborers. That's one of the but, reasons I'm working out in the woods by myself right now. But, Michael, when you go snowboarding, they could pull you back up the hill with a rope. No, wait, wait, wait. If you hired somebody, you could roll 90 and be faster. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Tail man. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to this. <laughs> I got nothing. I see Rob's of the Woods is saying Jerry's Resharp. I've heard a lot of good things about Jerry's Resharp. I haven't tried them. Yeah, I've and, heard that. And here recently on the forums, I'm seeing where he seems to be dropping the ball. So I don't know. Anybody else heard anything on Jerry's Resharp? I have not. All I've ever heard was good. I've heard a lot of I good stuff. I got a box of them. I've always did mine, so I don't know. Uh, from the wind wants to know, are there any places online to sell your lumber? Rick? The only place I know of is um, 
I've seen lumber on Craigslist. We don't use Craigslist, but we use Facebook uh, Marketplace. And word of mouth, last year, word of mouth almost buried us. Yep. I see a lot I think of guys. Jason from out of the woods, they used Etsy. Yeah, he uses Etsy. Um, a lot of guys out here use Craigslist. I use I'm getting them. better results from Craigslist than I am from Facebook. I used to get better from Facebook. Now I'm getting better from Craigslist. Oh, yeah. I never, when I advertised on Facebook, I never got a job. Got lots of work off Craigslist. I get some Ooh. off of Facebook, but I get mostly off of word of mouth. Word of mouth. Paul, yep. word of mouth. Yep. Yep. Now, didn't we hear something about Wood Planet here recently, Tim? Uh, yeah, that was from the wind farm. He said wood he used planet. wood planet. Yeah, yeah, but I think both the people on there are looking for tractor trailer loads of wood. I think he's a broker. Uh, let's see. Maiden is a great guy. They, Jerry's, has sent me bands to test. Okay, good. Uh, did you see Raven's question on spindle lube? No, I did not. Back up a few. Um, I don't see it. 6.52 p.m. So Raven asked, have you heard cotton picker spindle lube works great for buildup? Oh, um, yeah, I see it. That really I, thick stuff. There you it know, is. I, I think that's what Nathan over at Out of the Woods Sawmill uses. I'm pretty sure I saw him saw one of his episodes where he talked about using it. I'd never heard of it myself. All right. I got a question. Um, Kilted Sawyer puts that he has some Jerry Resharps for him to test. Have you tested any of the bands, Craig, or have you not tested them yet? Just curious. I'd like to know how they work out. All right, so I'm waiting for him to answer. Uh, from I got the a bunch farm, from Jerry's research. Yeah, there are more trailer loads, Rick, for the. Uh, yeah, the I think so. And then Kurt says, "Hi everyone, tuning in from Kokomo, Indiana. Just picked up my LT35 today. Congratulations! Hey, LT35, congratulations! John. Congrats, John. Uh, where's your LT35?" Yeah, it's not far from Kokomo, Indiana at all. Well, maybe it's in Kokomo now. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Uh, what do you call types of mills with two circular blades and 90 degree angles from each other? <laughs> That's like the Lucas mills, isn't it? Um, what do they call those? A swing no, blade. Lucas mill is a swing blade. It's not two blades, though. It's one. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, swing blade mill. I've never seen there used a mill, to be a mill called the Mighty Might that had multiple blades. I don't know if they still make those or not. All right. Yeah, they had up a vertical and horizontal. Yeah, the, there's a circular saw, old circle mills that had the um, I'll call them flitch cutting Ooh, blades that were, were horizontal, and then they had the big circle yep. blade. Yeah, I've seen some with the big blade, and then they have maybe two of the two, horizontal yeah. ones. All right, so Steve K says, may have asked this last time, what do you charge for green lumber, softwood, hardwood? Rick? That depends on the market. Um, our market is controlled on the softwood. Our market is controlled by what the Amish sell it for. We have a lot of Amish in our area. We can charge a little more than they do. But... Um, Basically, right now, softwood is going between 85 cents for dimensional board, per board foot, and the one buys we get a dollar board foot for. Hardwood depends on what type of hardwood it is. That's that's a market value there, and that changes daily. You have to get something like the hardwood market report to keep on top of that. Eric. Sorry, I was in the other other room. What? What? Uh, oh, I don't sell lumber, so I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> John. Um. <laughs> wow, I don't sell anything for under two dollars a board foot. 
don't care if it's pine or or pine is my low, cheapest and that's two dollars a board but um kiln dried walnut is going for about 14 dollars a board foot um white oak clear white oak two inch is going for a little bit more than walnut right now because i don't have any but i don't i don't sell anything for less than it costs me to cut it and for me to make a living that's the easiest answer i know what it takes to make a living and i know what it costs me to cut it michael i only sell softwood right now it's about what rick was saying down to about 80 cents for some of my lower grade for the higher grade one buy material up to about a dollar 20. but lately i think i need to raise the price because people are buying it a little too fast at that price just <laughs> recently the the market something's happened people are buying more lumber i think i need to raise my price uh johnny's mill i use 10 degree blade from jerry's three sharp not a bad blade okay uh resharp johnny's mill resharp um, i got i got a question we, for we uh, do, Steve. But, uh most people bring the logs to us so we're not using our log or buying logs so we just charge by hourly rate all right i don't sell very much lumber either i don't sell hardly any lumber i sell a lot of slabs and mantles yeah, that's what we, we used to do, but now it's going back to dimensional. Yeah, I don't sell very much lumber at all. So I don't try. And that just keeps me from keeping up with the prices. So I don't have to. All right. What's Victor say? I've been selling logs to local bandsaw guys by the truckload. I can handle a thousand bore foot on my single axle. All right. I do mostly mobile milling. I got a lot of logs, but I don't buy logs. Well, we're we're getting uh, all bands now. Anything else? Yeah, hang on. Wait. Eight and a half was ideal. My buddy Thomas O'Brien T seven bands. Mike, okay, here's one for Mike. <clears throat> uh, how do you market your wood? Do you use Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or is there another way to sell it? Is it common for people to buy it by the trailer? I've been mostly doing Facebook and Craigslist. Like I said earlier, Craigslist is doing well. I put an ad on for a little bit recently, then I have to pull it off because I got people almost fighting over the batches I've been putting up. And I've been doing it a little bit at a time, not trailer loads. I just don't hold on to it long enough to get a full trailer load to sell. I've just been selling it in maybe bundles of 100, not 100, but 20, 30 boards at a time. That's what I've been commonly doing. Was there another part of that question? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think you it. got it. I, I had some other it. ideas on how to market online that I wanted to implement, but lately craigslist i'm doing so well on that i haven't had to do anything else yeah, we have... but yeah, keep Steve. in mind i'm not cutting very much lumber i'm just doing more of a hobby level amount if i wanted to get into other business do more business i'd probably have to do more advertising <clears throat> paul you guys just do yours by word of mouth right yes yeah um, do, lately, we're doing a lot with our local tree guy, tree service guy. He can make do some buildings, so he brings us the logs. We just cut them up for him, and where they go. Oh, good. Let's see. Hopefully, he brings us a nice walnut when he sees it. <laughs> Fifty dollars an hour? What? What? We're, we're slow. We're videoing. What? Time. <laughs> we're, bring, we're bringing logs to you guys. <laughs> Where's uh, this? Well, I'll bring my logs to you too at that price for crying yeah. out loud. I'm, I'm not milling this year. I have to chase customers away at 125 an hour. I got guys in Richmond doing 155 and 160. Really? Yeah. I believe it. 
Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll send them all day long. Go for it. <laughs> when I was on the road, though, you know, I was out actually trying to earn a buck. So, you know, you're hopping. You're going to earn it. Yeah, I don't. I, I charge hundred dollars an hour plus delivery, setup fee. Thunderous night is signing off, guys. Have a good night, buddy. Yep. See you later. Good night, thunderous night. Thanks for the good questions. Good evening. Do you provide fu? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> <clears throat> you might want to finish that one out. Out. <laughs> out of the woods earlier, wanted to talk chainsaws. I saw that question, you guys. Yeah, I thought I'd yeah. seen something about a chainsaw. Yeah. Well, I, I have both Husky and a still. <clears throat> I like both of them. I run all they steels. Field. Nobody knows what Michael runs. Nobody. I, no. I used to run Huskies. I've run a lot of Huskies, but I went back to steel. I'm probably going to do a video soon about why that is. I run I run a Husky, but I'll run a steel because the gas and oil is free. <laughs> yeah, right. Husqvarna here, but, you know, uh, I mean, I grew up in logging country, and you might find somebody that swears by McCullough. Um, I find that it depends on who the who the salesmen and the distributors are and what the company likes. You know, if you are working for Mac and Blow, you probably were running a steel. But if you are working for one of the, the, the you know, the operations on northern Vancouver Island, you were running a McCullough. And, uh, you know, if you were running in the interior, you were running a Husqvarna. So they all make good saws. I think that's, you know, Jones Red, you name it. They all make good saws. That's what I grew up running on McCulloch. Well, yeah. Yeah, that McCulloch. used to be the saw. It used to be the saw. John, what do you use? I I used the Huskies, but I didn't buy them as a logging saw. You know, I bought them as a firewood saw. And I think the Huskies are just that much faster than the same weight of a, a steel. But I think the steel still got the longevity on the Husky. You know, I think that steel. I, I think that steel is going to go for a lot longer than that husky is. I just the steel's going for thirty five years, you know, and husky's. I don't think going to make it. Husky's been around that long, buddy. Uh, no, I mean the Ray. saw, the, the saw itself. Well, oh, yeah. I think I think John the husky's problem in the beginning was they ran too many RPMs, but I, I noticed yeah. that the newer huskies have slowed the RPMs down now, and increased the power. Right, Paul. What do you run? <laughs> All steels except for one Husqvarna, my little one. And since Mike's not here anymore from Hudson, I could tell you a story about why I got a Husqvarna, but <laughs> maybe some other time. Uh -oh. Okay. Right, I, so I will say I saw a Milwaukee 18 volt in there. I do run a Echo DCS 5000 battery saw. Love that saw. Fantastic little saw. But it won't compete with the big gas saws. Never. I run an 80 volt cobalt. It does real yeah. good. But yeah, that thing's. Um, awesome. Wait, wait. Do you run that or does Bonnie? Bonnie does. I run it once in a while. Quick, <laughs> <laughs> she lets you. Yeah. <laughs> when she ain't around, I grab it. <laughs> That's her saw. Uh, all right. So someone's asking do you provide finished products like S4S? No, I do not know. No, no. I rough saw only. All right. If, if you, if I don't upgrade, would you all put a homesteader on a twenty-one foot trailer? All right. So I got the homesteader, and I think he's got the homesteader thirty-six. Correct. Here's the things you got to look at. If you put that homesteader on a trailer, you have to put the log on the homesteader. If you haven't got a way to do it then I wouldn't suggest putting it on a trailer. Okay. Uh, what rail lube do wait, you wait, all use? Wait, let me go back to what Rick Okay, was. go ahead. So I started out with an LT10, smaller than his mill and on the ground. I put it on a trailer. 
and that entire builds over on the forestry forum. But it's actually, we actually hand rolled the logs onto that mill deck. We had a winch, a swing up winch arm that we custom built. And I almost never used it because we found two guys could roll a log up there real fast. So it is possible, but um, if you're not on forestry forum, I'd suggest, and I'm not affiliated with them at all, but if you want to see a build where I took a mill that had no log loading capacity and put it two feet off the ground, you could see how I did it. And it's very, very doable. The cheat is do it like an LT15. And Mike also mentioned that you have to build a platform on the trailer to see your log scale. And to be able to run the winch, so you, keep that you in have mind. To also. Make some mods, yes. You, you, I had to modify my scale, and and you know, and, and things like. And I didn't need a platform because I built mine like an LT15. So, if you look at an LT15, it's the trailer's directly under the mill, and I, I did the same thing. The, the difference is you got to modify your scale so that you can see it, because otherwise it's two feet higher than it should be. Okay. Next question. What rail lube? What rail lube do you all use? We don't ATF. use a lot of Hudsons, but I know you guys do. Eric, ATF, ATF, ATF. John, ATF. ATF. Okay. Try, try finding the, all, the oil based stuff because the synthetic stuff smells as I found. <laughs> yeah. Kurt also says, "Hey, I enjoy your shorts and videos." Davison's been subscribed for a while now. Learned a lot. There's kudos yeah, he's to the you, one who John. just. He just bought the 35 in uh, Kokomo. Awesome. I told him awesome. he needed any help. Come on down. Uh, anyone try Pharmac? Nope. Nope. Pharmac. What is Pharmac? Chainsaw. Oh, Chainsaw? No. What is my top handle? I can't tell you, Andy. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me give you a hint. Da! Chinese. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> so did we did we see crickets, uh, frontier yeah. mills? Uh, anyone have feedback on frontier? And Mr. Wilson, a 500i is well worth a light and strong. I was actually going to buy a fire 500i when I bought my 462. When I bought my 462, it was 2020. When everything was going crazy, my local dealer didn't have any 500 eyes. The only professional saw they had in the shop was the 462 that you see me using now on my videos. That's the reason I bought that. When I replace it, I might do a 500 eye. Uh, Steve, you had a Frontier, did you not? No, I had uh, a Norwood, which is Norwood. the same thing as a Frontier. But I got anything I can say about a Frontier. Frontier is owned by Norwood Sawmills. Okay. If you're looking for a customer service, you better call AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you have a 500i, do you not? I do, yeah. And I bought it during the, in the middle of COVID as well. It wasn't at the dealer, but a other customer had ordered it. I uh, got impatient, went down to Pennsylvania and bought one that they had on the showroom floor. And then... Uh, the one that he ordered had come into the Hudson's and just happened to be sitting over there one day and said, well, I'll take that. <laughs> so I got lucky. You have several, you have several steel saws. How many you have? Uh, steels, uh, 11 or 12. And one Husky. Oh, wow. One Husky. <laughs> you had a couple of McCulloch's too, didn't you? Yeah, those are Andy's, yeah. Andy's. Old, old 10 10s. You guys got a ton of saws. I have enough. <laughs> I only have three. I'm starting to question my real logger status now. <laughs> you have what? You say twelve? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to demote you to lumberjack. <laughs> and you have. I only calls. have three, I have and calls. I only I use one and a half. Oh, uh, let's see. I have ordered a new still 881 Magnum, and the 72 inch Gangbird Alaskan Chainsaw Kit. Oh, Grandbird. Oh, okay, sure. on an LT35, can only get 26 inch slabs. Now I'll get 68 inch slabs, and I have a giant black oak waiting for me to saw it. Awesome. I've, I've so what? What does that? 
<laughs> so what it, what is that, Eric? Is that a oh a chainsaw mill? It's a oh it's a okay big I got chainsaw you. mill. And the okay. 881 is pretty that's a pretty common that one and the um oh there's a big husky I've seen, like 105 cc husky husky I've seen guys use. But those big saws, you know, yeah, he's he, seventy. He's talking a six foot chainsaw mill. Yeah. So that's probably a two header deal. Like they, they a lot of times, maybe not two saw heads, but two people, um, with a, with an extra lube on the end. That's a big, big setup right there. I, you know, I don't. I'm too old now. I'm busted up. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> that's a lot of work right there. You'll, you'll find every muscle you didn't know you had when you use one. Oh, yeah, I've never. Not. I've never used a chainsaw mill. I've seen them at the shows, but I ran out of time to wait for it to cut a board. I ended up going somewhere else. That's how I started. <laughs> That's how I started. Only I started with a 52 cc saw and a small Granberg chainsaw mill. And uh, it was like, you know, five minutes of cut, let the saw cool down, make another cut, change the chain out, <laughs> make another cut. <laughs> I got a guy about five miles down the road has got one a big one and a two guy oper two two guys operate it. Yeah. But I mean those are really big slabs, sure. But other than that, it's that's you know. all they do. They do slabbing, but I can go drop a log off and by the time they get one slab, I can go to lunch, come back, and they still won't be done. Right, right. Meanwhile, you know, if the log is uh yeah. a thirty two inch log, I can mill the whole log up before they're done. <laughs> yeah. They're doing six foot slab, wide slab, yeah. nine. But they got a place for them. Oh yeah, they ship a lot to New York. Michael, that one looks like it's for you. I think we already covered that one. Yep, we covered that yeah, one. We covered that one. Oh, I'm slow, guys. Sorry. There was another one about a three sixty two, three sixty one. Great for falling or bucking up. I have kept that a secret, Tim. You didn't need to let that out. Shut up, Rick. <laughs> Maybe it was a 361. I have a 362, and I really liked it. I wore it out. It's not working very well now, so I don't use it. When I went in in 2020 to get my saw that I have now, I was going to get a 362 to replace it. I like the 362 with the 24-inch bar. But in 2020, they were out of commercial saws, and they didn't have any. So I still haven't replaced it. But I really like that 362, which I think is similar to the 361. There's a simplify, Eric. I think you've already seen that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cookie miser shortage just fell uploaded three days ago. Got 6,900 views already. Two other shorts of 436. <laughs> Tag to cookie video weddings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Well, we've yeah, got well. a lot of cookies for weddings. Yep. We have, yeah. I uh, just saw Michael Weller posted that he sold his LT40 to the guy that Kevin sold his 42, but then decided not to sell it. I mentioned that earlier. So Michael lives uh, up north of me. One of these days, I'm going to get up and film him on his new LT70. Nice. All right. Let's see. Help me out here, guys. I'm I must be way behind. All right, anyone make it You're to right. the Lumberjack shows in Boonville or Paul Bunyan? We go to Boonville every year. We enjoy the show. It's not as Boonville. big as it is not as big as it was before COVID, but it's getting back the way it was. Paul and Andy go there as well. Yeah. I'd love to, but somebody'd have to pay my airfare because um <laughs> that's about thirty three hundred miles for me. That's a long way for me too. I haven't yeah, found quite the incentive to go that far to one. Yeah, we can't even get Michael to come up north into the, the state right above him. You said spring. It's not even spring yet. <laughs> hey, it's 60 degrees there today. It's probably almost 80 here today. <laughs> yeah, Upper but you're down, they're down there in the warm country. All right, so I'm just going to pop a couple up here. Anybody want to comment on any of these? Let me know and I'll stop. Fortunately, I don't have cherry here, so I never got to try it on cherry and blow my plug out. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Rick just commented on that one. I know. Wind farm. 
Well, guys, I hate to point this out, but we we talked about keeping this at two hours, and we're running over. Yeah. Holy cow. How long do you guys want to go? It's about bedtime. We're at 219. <laughs> it's dinner my time here. Starting to get, my eyes are starting to dry out. <laughs> <laughs> I just close mine every 15 minutes or so, and then they're, they're watching it. <laughs> Thanks, Vic, for stopping by. So, dang it, closes his eyes for for 15 minutes or so, he said, right? Yep. <laughs> I thought I heard snoring. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That was me. It might have been I fun thought was, I thought it was a chainsaw. <laughs> well, so, I, I say we wrap this up, guys, if you're all in, <laughs> in for that. Raven, well, I can afford some more lube now, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, I saw a comment by uh, Crane Creek. Uh, I make resin tables. I'm assuming you mean like um, uh, epoxy resin. Um, I've done a, a couple few myself. Awesome. So, yeah, I would love monster slabs, buddy. But uh, I just couldn't do it anymore. I got a four foot pondo that I've been thinking about. One day it might have to come down. I'll get someone else to slab it for me. All right. So it looks like we got a bunch of people leave, leaving all at the same time. So Yeah, let's it's go, about that time. I let's think. go ahead and wrap this up, guys. We appreciate you, everybody that stopped in and said hello. Man, yeah. Thank you yep. for all the questions. And this chat is only successful because you guys have come to see us. Yep. So thanks for being here. I love it. I enjoy it. Yep. And uh, this is the first time. We've had seven of us all on at the same time. So I think I think it went really well, guys. So Absolutely. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, was I, glad I, wasn't I wasn't even going to be here, but I'm all busted up. So I had to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you grab that bully? I saw a super chat in the comments a while back. I don't know who that went to, but whoever sent that to whoever they sent it to, thank you for that. That was uh, that. Yes, that was uh, to me. Uh, Rob's Woods and Custom Sawmilling. I think that is. He told me um, here buy a gallon of diesel. Oh, <laughs> That's about the that price of diesel too. You buy an alternator pulley. Oh, uh, I got a pulley. Oh, I just got to oh, put it on the damn alternator now. Oh, no. <laughs> I should have had that zip right here, but then I just gave away something. <laughs> I it's not done yet. Uh -oh. can't believe you went there, Steve. <laughs> Steve's channel is MSD making sawdust. Look up MSD making sawdust. That's Steve's channel. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Steve, you're a sneaker boy. I tell you, you just come out there with the comments all of a sudden. You're you're yep. kind of mean. No, <laughs> you gotta keep everybody happy and smiling. All right. Well, guys. All right. I'm gonna end this. Guys, hang around just a minute, okay? Don't don't all disappear right. yet. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Good night. Good night. <laughs>